than Alabama Michigan. It feels like in SEC world, the whole SEC is rooting for Alabama. And it feels like in Big Ten world, the whole Big Ten is rooting for Michigan. Now, live from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, with Quint Kesnick on the sideline, and alongside Dusty Dvorak, here's Joe Tessitore. We welcome you to the granddaddy of them all the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential. The 110th Rose Bowl game, the fourth time that it is a college football playoff semifinal. And it includes the number one Michigan Wolverines, the champions of the Big Ten at 13 and 0 against the SEC champions, the Alabama Crimson Tide. And Dusty, as you look out, from high atop this Rose Bowl Stadium, it is a spectacular day, the way you expect New Year's Day to look with this game. To our left, the end zone painted in maize and blue for Michigan. To our right, Alabama, the crimson and white. It is sun-kissed with the San Gabriel Mountains, and there's a slight breeze, the way it's supposed to be. It doesn't get any bigger. It doesn't get any better Michigan Alabama not just a Rose Bowl but a chance to play for a national championship we are in for a treat here today Mr. Tessitore the two winningest programs in college football history Michigan with a thousand and two wins Alabama with 965 and Jim Harbaugh's Wolverines taking to the Rose Bowl field on a beautiful day coach Harbaugh who of course, the controversy surrounding Michigan this year suspended for six games this year. He came here this week on a media day he said, you can criticize me, but don't say anything about my players. He loves this team. And of course, he is opposite 72 year old Nick Saban, his 17th season at Alabama as the Crimson Tide make their run out here in Pasadena, California. And for Alabama, the lowest ranked team, number four, they're seated in the penultimate rankings to then make the CFP. They were eighth, they jumped to four. They are the second team to make the college football playoff with a non conference regular season loss. Ohio State did that in 2014, Dusty. The captains are making their way out to midfield. The ornate painted rows where they will have the coin toss with our referee Michael Vandervelt from the Big 12. Alabama in white with the crimson helmets. Michigan in their home maize and blue. My name is Michael Vandervelt. I'll be a referee today alongside my umpire Mr. Robert Richardson. But more importantly, it's my honor to introduce to you today the Tournament of Roses president, Mr. Alex Agajanian. Good luck, gentlemen. And next, we have the Tournament of Roses Grand Marshal, Ms. Audra McDonald. Thank you for being here, and thank you for presenting today's coin. Appreciate it. Gentlemen, today's coin features the logos of both teams. On this side, we have the Michigan Wolverines. And on the other side, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide. The winner of the toss will be determined by whichever team's logo is face up after landing on the ground. Alabama, you've won the toss. Defer, you'd like the ball. Which way would you like to kick? With my tunnel, with my tunnel. So go ahead and get you back to that spot. You're gonna kick that way? Great. Alabama, they've won the toss. Deferred their choice to the second half. Michigan will receive in the north end zone. Gentlemen, let's have a great ball game. Dusty Dvorak's game plan is brought to you by Wendy's. Order a Wendy's Biggie bag today because if there's one thing you can bet on, it's Biggie. Well, for Michigan, they're going to have to limit Jalen Milrow's ability as a runner, both in a designed quarterback run game when nothing's there, him tucking it and running with the football. And for Alabama on the flip side, they need to win first down. Michigan's going to try to line up, getting second and third and short and medium. Michigan, one of the best third down offenses all year. It's because they're so good on first down. The tie defensively will have to win on first down here today. 
Let's go to the field to Quint Kesnick. Q. 63 degrees and sunny, tightly cropped grass field. The turf labeled as firm. I tell you, you watch warmups, Alabama is going to win the beauty contest. But both teams very comfortable in this moment. Michigan, third year in a row. Maybe the third time's the charm. Nick Saban, seven titles. This is where we belong. The right mix of tension, nerves, anxiety, hype, and hope. Hype and hope indeed, Q. Michigan is to the left side as they will be going left to right to receive this kickoff from Will Reichard. The graduate student from nearby Hoover, Alabama, about 45 minutes away from Tuscaloosa. Samaj Morgan, the true freshman from West Bloomfield, Michigan, is the deep man set to return. As the ball is set by Reichard at the 35-yard line, the shadows to Alabama's back on a beautiful sunny afternoon in Pasadena for the 110th Rose Bowl game as we are underway and Reichard strikes it away deep into the end zone for a touchback. And that means we will have the 27th start in the career of J.J. McCarthy. And J.J. McCarthy, I don't think he gets enough credit for just how smart he is with the football, prevents the negative play, and he's an excellent athlete, Joe. He banged up his ankle against Penn State. He hasn't been quite the same since then. With the layoff, he's healthy, he's ready, and I expect quarterback run game to be a part of this play in here today for the Wolverines. Michigan first play of the game, 25-yard line going left to right. McCarthy in the shotgun, flanked by Blake Gorham, the running back, the two-time first team all of America. McCarthy sprint right, looking to pass, extending the play, being chased, and that ball is intercepted on the very first play of the game by Caleb Downs, the outstanding true freshman. J.J. McCarthy throws an interception. Caleb Downs takes it. Only the fifth interception this season for J.J. McCarthy. What a start for this Crimson Tide defense. They bring Malachi Moore from the field off the edge. And it's J.J. McCarthy, takes his time, he's looking down the field, nobody's open, tries to force it, ball kind of flies on him. And what a job by Caleb Downs, the unbelievably talented true freshman, gets the foot in bounds, and the takeaway on the opening play of this game, wow. What a start for Caleb Downs. Roman Wilson was the intended target. Instead, Caleb Downs comes in front, picks it off, and Alabama will start this Rose Bowl game from the Michigan 31-yard line. Roy Dell Williams will be the running back with Jalen Milrow, the star quarterback for Alabama. Our officiating crew from the Big 12 is going to take a look for a replay as the play is officially under review as Caleb Downs on the near sideline at the 31-yard line went up high to intercept this ball. And I think they're going to look to see where his foot was as he jumped up. Again, first play of the game, J.J. McCarthy sprinting right, looking to extend. Caleb Downs went up. What do you see here on replay, Dusty? Well, in the back of his heel, as he is, he's kind of just positioned on the sidelines, and his heel is in the white before he jumps. After review, the defender was out of bounds when he possessed the ball. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be second down. So they review it, and it is reversed. And it goes back to Michigan because just slightly the back of the heel of Caleb Downs was touching the white boundary on the near side of this Rose Bowl field. Ooh, what a huge disaster averted for Michigan and J.J. McCarthy. And if you're J.J. McCarthy, that pass got away from him, Joe. He's got to take a deep breath, exhale, and just rest assured that that mistake behind you, don't have to worry about it. Second and 10, ball on the 25 as they get a reset. Blake Corum, the running back. McCarthy in the shotgun. He goes with a wide receiver screen to the left side. And it is Morgan who darts ahead for a few yards before he is pushed out of bounds by Kool-Aid McKinstry. Getting a little chippy early down there. A lot of pushing and shoving. The quick screen on the perimeter. Nice job by the Alabama defenders. Both McKinstry, Malachi Moore getting off of blocks and escorting the Michigan Wolverine 
pass receiver out of bounds, setting up third and long. And this is where Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell want to live here today. Third down and eight. Michigan at their own 27-yard line going left to right in their home uniforms. First play of the game. McCarthy and Michigan dodging a bullet as the play was reviewed and it was ruled incomplete, not an interception. Third and eight. McCarthy back to pass. And that was denied. Incomplete. He was looking for A.J. Barner. Instead, Terion Arnold, the first-team All-American defensive back, was able to get in the way. Well, he's got elite cover skills, and it's super tight coverage. J.J. McCarthy trying to fit this into a tight window, and Terion Arnold not having it. Gets the right hand in, creates the pass breakup. What a start for this tied defense. So Tommy Doman... His first year is the kickoff specialist and punter. He's averaging 44.6 yards per punt for Michigan. Is on to punt away. A three and out for the Wolverines. They only got two yards. This is a high punt as driven outside the numbers to the top of the field where it is hauled in by Caleb Downs and he runs out of bounds. And that is where Alabama will take over at the 37 yard line. Alabama will be moving right to left in their white uniforms with crimson numbers in the crimson helmets and they are let out by Jalen Milrow who came up with the grave digger play against Auburn the fourth and 31 miracle touchdown pass to the corner of the end zone resiliency the word you have to use with this tied team and really with Jalen Milrow and the improvement he made the last five and a half ball games of the season as good as anybody in all of college football. Alabama moving right to left. Shotgun for Milrow. Roy Dell Williams in the backfield. In motion is Law. Milrow back to pass. Being chased and being sacked. Taken down by Braden McGregor. The senior from Port Huron, Michigan with a big sack. That is three and a half on the year now. Well, McGregor's so good. He's got that length at 6'6". Six, six. And he does a nice job coming inside the freshman, Caden Proctor, who's had all kinds of issues in protection this year. Slips inside, and he gets Jalen Milrow to the ground. It's a loss of 13 yards. It is second and 23 for Alabama from their own 24-yard line. Williams motions out. Empty look for Milrow. Has protection. Gets it out of the backfield to Dupree. C.J. Dupree, the six foot five junior tight end with the reception for 11 yards. It'll be third and 11. Smart play picking up essentially close to what you lost after that sack. Nice job identifying size, finding Dupree, slipping out of the backfield wide open. A nice pickup after the catch for the tight end. Third and long, Alabama at their own 35-yard line. Braden McGregor, the defensive end for Michigan, came up with a big sack that has put Alabama in this hole. Showing Jalen pressure, Milrow Joe. is checking at the line as Michigan shows pressure. Roy Dell Williams is in pass protection at the running back. Three receivers to the near side. Pressure on Milrow again as he tries to scramble free, but he cannot. He is taken down by Josiah Stewart, the second sack of the game from this feisty Michigan defense. Well, aggressive is what Jesse Minter is to start this ball game, showing six bodies right at the line of scrimmage, and they all come. And ultimately, it's Stewart who loops around, wraps around, nowhere for Milrow to find any kind of running room in the second Michigan sack of this opening possession. Good coverage down the field, but the pressure too much for this tied offensive line. Alabama punting from their own 24. James Burnup is in. He rolls to the right, gets it off, does the Aussie. Morgan is the deep man returner who comes forward and muffs it. He muffs the ball. The ball is loose, and Alabama looks to have jumped on it. A muff punt by Morgan, the true freshman, and Alabama is able to recover. Right around the 44-yard line of Michigan, Morgan came screaming in after that punt and didn't secure it. Tried to catch it on the run, to your point, coming screaming in. He tried to catch it on the run downhill, never got his hands fully underneath it, muffs the punt, Alabama falls on top. Game-changing type of play here on special teams. And only after the first possession. Wow, what a mistake by Morgan. Morgan was looking around for the ball. Couldn't find it. There was a mountain of Alabama players who jumped on it. So Alabama takes over first down at the 44-yard line as they will keep it on the ground with McClellan. 
And Jace McClellan inside the 40-yard line as the senior from Alito, Texas, goes for six yards. It's second and four. Good to see McClellan back healthy. Remember, had that foot issue. Auburn really got banged up, missed the SEC championship game. He's practiced, he's feeling good, and good movement off the right side for a nice pickup on first down. Six yards for McClellan. Alabama moving right to left at the Michigan 38. Roydell Williams in the backfield. Milrow keeps it. Milrow is scampering out to the right, trying to get to the corner, and he darts ahead for that line to gain on second and four. It was Makari Page who pushed him out. Milrow's going to be close to it based on that mark, and it is indeed a first down for Alabama as a Michigan player is down at the end of the play. So Jalen Milrow goes for four yards and picks up the first down for Alabama, stepping out of bounds right at that line to gain. It is scoreless here with 10.56 remaining in the first quarter. You're listening to the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. Crit Glad you're with us here. Joe Tessitore, Dusty Dvorak, and Quint Kesnick coming to you from Pasadena at the granddaddy of them all. Scoreless early on here in the first quarter. Alabama was able to recover a muff punt moments ago. And Quint, Ray Sean Benny, the defensive tackle from Michigan, was injured, walked off the field moments ago as well. It looks significant he needed the help of their medical staff. Benny, one of their interior defensive linemen, puts more pressure on Chris Jenkins and Mason Graham. Uh, so far in this game, an, an awkward start, an unpredictable start, a pick that wasn't a fumbled punt, and it looks like Michigan going after the left tackle of Alabama, Proctor, whose pass protection early in the season was questioned. That's exactly right, Quinn. Caden Proctor, he's a talented true freshman. He's 6'7", 360, but... You know, had some real issues with protection, and clearly on that opening possession, they attack him two different times. They get home twice, and they're going to respot this football, they Joe. Are. It looked like Jalen Milrow hit the sidelines and stepped out. Ball was back behind where the first down yard, uh, first down marker was. So it is third down and one. As with the injury to Benny, they had time to go back and look at where Jalen Milrow went out, and they said it was a three and a half yard run, not a four yard run. So the ball is on the Michigan 35-yard line. This is after Michigan muffed the punt. Alabama recovered it. And now a third down and one at the Michigan 35 for the Alabama offense. That converts 83% of their third down and less than three. That is the best in all of football. McClellan is the running back. Milrow's going to go quarterback sneak, and this is going to be close. He surged ahead and looks to be right at that line to gain, but it definitely will depend on the mark, Dusty. Oh, it is close. It doesn't get much closer. And both the guys coming in before they spot the football, they are right at the line to gain. Not a lot of push. Good job by that Michigan defense getting leverage. But they're going to say Jalen Miro powers his way and gets just enough to move the sticks. And that is the first first down of the game for either team. There's not, I say, fist fight down there. Big physical Bam offensive line against an excellent front for the Wolverines. An old fashioned bare knuckle brawl down there on oh, third and short. The defenses have come to play. Alabama with the two sacks, negative three total yards. Michigan with two yards. First down and 10, Alabama at the Michigan 34. Low snap, but he is able to get it to McClellan, who breaks free. Chase McClellan, touchdown run. Alabama strikes first. Milrow struggled to secure it, but when he got it to Jace McClellan, he was off like a rocket. 34 yards off the right side. Touchdown tied. Inside zone, key block by the right guard, 77. Jaden Roberts, he gets up to the linebacker, secures the hole off the B gap. Jace McClellan hits it downhill. The safety doesn't fill. And it's a touchdown for the Tide to kick us off here in the first quarter. Chase McClellan, the team's leading rusher by a wide margin, who was out with a foot injury for the SEC championship game. A 34-yard touchdown. 
And the extra point by Will Reichert is up and through out of the hole to James Burnham. And with 9.41 left in the first quarter, it is Alabama 7 to zip. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. You're listening to the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Alabama leads seven zip. Joe Testator, Dusty Dvorak, Quint Kesnick with you in Pasadena, California. Moments ago, we just saw Jace McClellan go for a 34-yard touchdown. What made it happen? Jaden Roberts, the right guard. This Jaden Roberts, whenever he was inserted into the starting offensive line, he changed everything about the two-thirds way through the season, and it really gave him a little bit more nasty, a little bit more physical and identity on the ground, and the entire offensive line has fed off that. And Jaden Roberts did a good job on a combo getting up to the second level, securing the linebacker allowing Jace McClellan that hole and the Jace McClellan in the open field. Same was still the excellent safety came down, got left right in his tracks, a little juke move by McClellan as he took into the end zone. The blocking up front, Jaden Roberts, Seth McLaughlin, Tyler Booker, that interior has been really good for Alabama this year. It was really good on that touchdown run, Joe. This is something you and I discussed earlier, Dusty, and that is that Michigan has controlled the majority of their games all year long. They have only trailed for a total of 23 and a half minutes this season. The entire season. And now they're already in a touchdown hole as Will Reichard kicks away. And it skies over the head of Samaj Morgan, who had muffed the punt, the turnover, just moments before. So now, J.J. McCarthy and that Michigan offense will be back out on the field. 9.41 to play here in the first quarter. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. We haven't seen him run the ball yet, which is kind of crazy. And they wanted to be aggressive, right? We've seen screens outside. We've seen J.J. McCarthy out on the perimeter. And we're going empty right here, but a little bit surprised that Jerome Moore haven't seen him run the football yet to start this ball game. An empty look on first down as now they will shift back into a formation with 11 personnel and Blake Corum is flanking J.J. McCarthy in the shotgun. First down, they're going left to right. Here is Corum with blockers in front, lowers his head out past the 30-yard line. Nice job of running there by Blake Corum, who's so tough to tackle. Just 5'8", 215. He is a thick running back who runs with great pad leverage power and a good vision off the right side following the block of trevor keegan who pulled out in front a nice pickup this is where they want to be second medium to allow a drive to get going for this offense six yards for quorum second and four from the 31. they're going to pitch to him to the left side he gets a seal block and he's got a first down and more blake quorum out past midfield all the way to the 47 yard line of Alabama before he is chased down by Jalen Key. Well, I like the play design. Flip it to the field, and they come back across with motion all the way across. And it's 44, Max Bredesen, who really is a lead blocker. He gets up on one Kool Aid McKinstry. They're able to get to the edge and a big pickup on the ground for this Wolverine rushing attack. Max Bredesen, who had a great lead block to pave the way for the first Michigan touchdown in the win against Ohio State. First down, Michigan moving left to right at the Alabama 48. Offense crests onto that Rose Bowl paint. McCarthy, that ball, as he attempted to pass it to his tight end, A.J. Barner, was deflected by the Alabama linebacker, Deontay Lawson, incomplete, it'll be second and 10. Well, Deontay Lawson, just so smart, always in the right place at the right time. He's coming downhill right in the face of J.J. McCarthy, and J.J. McCarthy elevates to throw this football as does Lawson, who gets his hands up and creates the pass breakup. Nice Eight, play 22 by 32. to go here in the first quarter. Second down and 10. Michigan offense moving left to right. J.J. McCarthy in the shotgun, flanked by Donovan Edwards to his right. Man in motion is Loveland, the tight end. They quickly get it to Loveland, who's trying to turn the corner, and then he's able to break one tackle and dive ahead for a few more yards. It was Deontay Lawson who was able to wrap him up. It's a three-yard completion. It'll be third down 
and a long seven yards. Well, it's really well played by the freshman Caleb Downs. He comes down, fights through the block of Roman Wilson on the perimeter, and really helps to secure Loveland getting out of bounds with a very minimal game. Third down and eight. The clock ticks under eight minutes. Ball's on the Alabama 46-yard line for J.J. McCarthy. And he's going to run it himself and has a good move to try to get to that line to gain on the right side of the field. Jalen Key made the tackle, and he's going to be just about a yard short as it is going to be fourth and one from the Alabama 39-yard line. Offense is staying on the field, Dusty. I like the play call. This is just a quarterback sweep to the short side of the field, the boundary. Nice blocking out in front and a good move by J.J. McCarthy. you got to think. This is going to two Blake Corum in this spot. So a jumbo unit with multiple tight ends that shift from the right side to now the left side. It is fourth down and one with Corum in the backfield with McCarthy. He gets it and goes straight ahead and has four yards for a Michigan first down. How about that surge on the interior of that Michigan offensive line? First team all Big Ten center. Drake Nugent doing an excellent job. And remember, Zach Center hurt that Ohio State game. They had to kick Carson Bar Barnhart down from right tackle to right guard. You got Trinte Jones, a right tackle, but the interior of that Michigan offensive line with good push on a big fourth down. Their 80% success rate on fourth down this season. A four-yard run from Quorum. First and 10 Michigan from the Alabama 35. McCarthy in the shotgun, so his right is Quorum. Quorum's going to get more work, but this time he struggles to find much of anything as Justin Aboigbe, the big defensive tackle, is able to bring him down after a gain of just two. Gap scheme run, pull backside guard, backside tackle with the defensive line for Alabama. They're there to stand up, and Aboigbe, man, what a year he had. He's big, physical, 6'5", 290-plus, all SEC caliber player up there up front for the Tide making a nice play on first down. Kalel Mullings comes in at running back in a pistol formation on second down and eight. McCarthy play action. McCarthy on second and eight being pressured. He escapes. He's going to look to tuck run now throws late and gets it complete to the sidelines to Mullings. That was a great play of individual effort from J.J. McCarthy for a 20-yard reception to the Alabama 13-yard line. McCarthy showing off that athleticism and 41, or look like a boy be 92. He gives up the perimeter. J.J. McCarthy, he's got a lot of green grass out in front. The defender falls down to Deontay Lawson, and what a find to Mullings on the sidelines. Corum back in at running back after Mullins makes the big reception. Michigan moving left to right. Five minutes and seven seconds to play. They go with the jet sweep. It's Morgan, the freshman, trying to turn the corner. He does so inside the 10-yard line. Five minutes to play in this first quarter, and Michigan is threatening to score. Great job here by Sharon Moore. He is really spreading out this Alabama defense, hitting them on the perimeter, selling the short yardage, attacking them right in the middle. But a nice job mixing in perimeter runs and then attacking this Alabama defense. Michigan second down and four at the Alabama eight-yard line. Corum is in at the running back. McCarthy in the shotgun. The tight end, Barner, now comes to the tight formation on the left side. Michigan moving left to right. McCarthy back to pass. Is able to get it complete and into the end zone is Blake Corum. He was wide open, leaking out of the backfield, and brings it right across the goal line. Touchdown, Wolverines. What an answer from this Michigan offense. Outstanding job all the way around. And it's just a free release right in the middle of the field. Man-to-man -man coverage, a linebacker doesn't identify, doesn't run with him. They leave him open in the flats and an easy pitch and catch for J.J. McCarthy to tie this thing up. McCarthy to Corum for an eight-yard touchdown reception. James Turner's extra point just sneaks through on the left side. With 4.23 left in the first quarter of this much-anticipated college football playoff game, it is tied up at 7-7. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. Game presented by Prudential 
on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. What a beautiful afternoon here in Pasadena. Joe Tessitore, Dusty Dvorak, Quint Kessnick with you. Remember just moments ago, Dusty, we said Michigan has only trailed for a total of 23 and a half minutes all season long. They didn't like that feeling. <laughs> Ten plays, 75 yards, five minutes, 18 seconds, and Blake Corum with his first receiving touchdown of the season, and we're tied. And I was just a bust on the touchdown. Nobody accounts for him coming out of the backfield wide open, an easy find for J.J. McCarthy, but... Man, I really like what Sharon Moore and this offense was doing on emotions, a lot of shifts, and really, really doing an excellent job finding success, running the football on the perimeter. You didn't know coming into this game, but Braswell, Dallas Turner, the speed of that Bama defense, if Michigan could get to the perimeter, the bulk of that possession was perimeter successful runs by that Wolverine offense. Let's go down to the field and check in with Quint Kessner. Q? Well, on the Michigan sideline, an exhale and the chest kind of puffs up a certain confidence. You go back two years when they lost to Georgia, a game that got away from them early, punched in the gut. That's not going to happen today. Tommy Doman will be kicking off left to right. Kendrick Law is the deep man returner for Alabama as this sails over his head to the right for a touchback. 4-23 to go here in a game that you think about the psychology of things as well Dusty and the confidence of having a long sustained drive of settling in to a pressure packed game like this massive and you know you heard Quint touch on it like able to exhale and breathe a little bit because you could tell the early interception that gets negated then they muff that punt like it's, they, they were tight Michigan was tight I think that that drive right there really allows them to say you know what we're good we're right where we need to be while we have a short break in the action, let's send it to Kevin Winter in the studio. All right, Joe Tess, thank you very much. We're with Trevor Maddich as well. I want to echo what Tess and Trevor, would, uh, Tess and Dusty were mentioning. That's a hell of a drive by the Michigan Wolverines. And it was a great answer because it was a, a muffed punt that led to a short field for Alabama's offense, and they went up 7 nothing. Michigan just comes back and does what they need to do. The quarterback's legs, both on a quarterback sweep and then on a scramble, they hit a 20-yard pass down the field, and then a very well-designed triple pick play to make that that running back quorum wide open for the touchdown. All right, for the Alabama Crimson Tide, they got their answer on, on the short field. They did it on the ground. Milrose dropped back a couple of times, and he was sacked two in the first three. Right. Well, one of his most important plays was a, a quarterback run to the left on his own read. That was stopped up. So he cut all back to the right, all the way to the right sideline. I mean, both quarterbacks with their legs are getting things going on offense. And you said that was going to be one of the keys to the game. We have a trench warfare. 7-7 seven, seven is our score. Alabama about to get the ball. Not many times, Trevor, am I jealous of our colleagues because we get to do things too. Man, I'm damn jealous of Tess, Dusty, and Quint. Sitting in Pasadena today, guys, back to you with the Rose Bowl. Kevin, it is a glorious day. It is the kind of day that you think about when you think about the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. Glad you're with us listening here on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Joe Tessitore, Dusty Dvorak, Quint Kesnick with you. 4.23 to play here in this first quarter. The scoring opened up with Jace McClellan with a 34-yard touchdown run for Alabama. And then the answer off the 10-play drive as Blake Corum had an 8-yard touchdown reception from J.J. McCarthy, and we are tied up at 7-7. What a start. Fireworks already early on here at the Rose Bowl. I'll be intrigued to see how Tommy Reese comes back here. Jace McClellan only two touches, a lot of success for him on the ground early on. Is that something we see them come back to? And remember, one of the great things about this Michigan defensive front is the rotation. They go eight guys deep. Rashawn Benny already goes down, one of those defensive tackles in that rotation. So do we see Tommy Reese continue to try to attack this Michigan defense in the middle and run the football right at him. Tommy Reese is the 31-year-old offensive coordinator for Alabama in his first year after he was the play caller for Brian Kelly at Notre Dame. He is Saban's offensive coordinator. He said, I needed this challenge, and in midseason, he retooled the playbook for Jalen Milrow to develop into the outstanding quarterback he has become. And now Milrow takes over as Alabama in their white jerseys with crimson helmets moves right to left. They'll keep it on the ground, and Roy Dell Williams has nowhere to go. 
He lost half a yard as the entire defensive front of Michigan collapsed on him, led by Mike Samerstill coming in from that defensive back position as well. It was a wall of Wolverines that he ran into. It was Mason Graham. It was Kenneth Grant up front, not giving an inch and nowhere to run with the football. So it is second down and 11 as Kendrick Law, the versatile wide receiver, first lined up in the backfield. And now it's an empty set for Milrow from the Alabama 24. Milrow looks right. Quick strike is incomplete. Kendrick Law was the intended receiver, but he never turned his head. So it's going to be third and 11 for Alabama. Quarterback wide receiver on two different pages. Jalen Milrow thought that was a timing route. Ball comes out right as Law is getting into his break. But Law never turned his head, was not expecting the football, just a miscommunication. Jalen Milrow is just one of two passing for 11 yards and has been sacked two times. Michigan defense early, three TFLs, two sacks. This is third down and 11 for Alabama. 341 remaining in the first quarter, tied up 7-7 in the Rose Bowl CFP semi. Milrow back to pass, being pressured again. Is going to run it, has plenty of space, but he slides down well short of the line to gain. Did he just lose his footing, Dusty? Boy, I to, we'll have to see the replay here. I was surprised we saw Jalen Milrow looked as if he was giving himself up, but you can't give yourself up three, four yards side of the first down. He had the ability to make a yeah. cut and pick up this first down. He and slipped I, and he fell. Slipped. Yeah, he slipped and fell. That's a good call he by you, Joe. He slipped and fell. He lost his footing as he was attempting to make a cut. And with that, it's fourth down, and James Burnup, the redshirt junior punter from Australia, comes down the punt away as Morgan will be back to return. Burnup gets off a sky punt that drives Morgan back inside the 20, where he fair catches it near the 18-yard line. So the Michigan defense that has been so strong all year long does their job, and now you hear the cascade of boos from the Alabama fans as James Burnup is down. The six foot six, 220 pound punter is down at the end of the play as Michigan came in against him. His kicking leg was raised and it was a Michigan special teams player who ran right through the exposed kicking leg of James Burnup. That was Kayshawn Bennett, the backup defensive end from Suffield, Connecticut, who plays the edge on special teams, who ran into the extended punting leg of James Burnup and sent him spinning to the Rose Bowl turf and down. And now he is walking off the field and he is limping as he's favoring that right leg. Will Reichard, who's the star kickoff specialist and place kicker, is the backup punter if needed. 2.49 to play in the first quarter. 7-7, number one Michigan and the four seed Alabama tied up here in this Rose Bowl game. The 100th Rose Bowl to be played at this grand West Coast Palace of a bowl. First down Michigan at the 19 yard line as Corum gets the carry and he is met in the hole by Lawson. He goes ahead to the 23-yard line. You can hear those pads popping from up here. Man, Deontay Lawson coming down and meeting Blake Corum in the hole. That's two physical football players on display. Nice pickup on first down for four yards. It's a four-yard run for Corum. He has five rushes for 37 yards. Donovan Edwards comes in at running back and then runs out to the right side of the field as it's an empty set for McCarthy on second and six, who has time, goes out to the near side and gets it complete to Morgan, who turns the corner and will have a first down for Michigan. A seven-yard reception for Morgan. Good confident throw by J.J. McCarthy from the pocket. Morgan... Being very active here early, got just a step, working on the linebacker, Tresman Marshall. That pass delivered perfectly out in front where he could catch it, sneak out of bounds, and move the sticks. Mullings comes into the game at running back. Multiple shifts now as they go with a two-back set with Edwards and Mullings, and they go orbit motion, but they give it to Donovan Edwards, and it is well blocked as he lowers his shoulder right into the cornerback, Terry on Arnold, 
and goes ahead for a solid eight yard run. Michigan continues to attack the perimeter. This time they pull the right guard. Barnhart get him out in front also lead up with the second back who was in the backfield Mullings and a really nice pickup to the short side of the field for eight yards on first down. A minute to play in the first quarter. Tied game. Michigan with the ball moving left to right. Second and two from their own 38-yard line. Mullins in the backfield flanking McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy takes a snap. He gives to Mullins. Mullins is able to break a tackle and still leg drive as he makes his way out to the 44-yard line where a flag is down. We will check on that and see if this stands as a Michigan first down. Forty four seconds to go here in this first quarter Michigan running the ball on this drive as coach Harbaugh looks on waiting to see what the call is here. You said running the ball in this drive the last two drives been unbelievably impressed with Sharon Moore and the different kind of rushing attacks they're throwing at this Bama defense Bama celebrating right now Phil that. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 44, offense, 15 yard penalty, still be second down. It's on Max Bredesen. You can see the Alabama players down there clapping and pretty fired up. And they're going to get Bredesen on Caleb Downs. Caleb Downs is on the ground right around the rows. And Bredesen, as we typically see all the time, went in for that second over the top finish. And the officials say it's not going to be that kind of game here today. Draws the personal foul. That is the first penalty of this Rose Bowl. As the clock will now count down as Michigan resets, and we're coming up on half a minute to play here in this first quarter. It is second down and 11 from the 29 yard line after the penalty. McCarthy is going to go with a quarterback run, and McCarthy is taken down right away by 300 pound Damon Payne. Quarterback draw right up the middle. We're seeing JJ McCarthy's athleticism, his running ability. It's going to be on display all game. Third time now we've seen him designated as a runner. That's an excellent job by Payne on the interior, disengaging, getting off the block, and getting McCarthy to the ground, setting up third and long. And with that, triple zeros on the clock. McClellan scored a touchdown for Alabama, 34 yard run. Corum had an eight yard pass and with that at the end of the first quarter we are tied up at 7 7. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. You're listening to the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN radio and the ESPN app. Number one Michigan and number four Alabama are tied 7-7. Joe Tessitore, Dusty Dvorak and Quint Kesnick is down on the field. Q. Alabama coach Nick Saban told me pregame that this would be a game of adjustments and right now Michigan's eye candy on offense the motion the trading the shifting is causing some uh, damage control moments for this Alabama defense. We have not mentioned their two edge presence uh, outstanding players Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell which is surprising as the Wolverines Joe have success Dusty running at the edge. First play of the second quarter Michigan ball third down and nine from their own 31 yard line Edwards flanking McCarthy man in motion is Wilson to the near side McCarthy gets it complete over the middle and trying to fight for extra yardage is Morgan but he is torn down short of that line the gain is Kool-Aid McKinstry just body slammed him after a seven yard reception third and long Kevin still dials up a pressure it's man to man across the board tight coverage a good contested catch by Morgan but you nailed it kind of a body slam there by Kool-Aid McKinstry a couple yards shy of the first down and a good stop by the Crimson Tide defense. So Tommy Doman is on the punt again as Michigan was stopped at their own 39 yard line. His second punt of the game. Caleb Downs is the return man for Alabama with his heels on the 19 yard line. It is a sky punt and the fair catch at about the 23 yard line by Caleb Downs as that is where Alabama will take over with 14 11 to go in the second quarter. We now pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the college football playoff semifinal 
at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. Fourteen eleven to play here in the second quarter. Alabama moving left to right. Tie game against Michigan. Jalen Milrow in the shotgun looking to pass. Pressured straight up the middle and brought down again for the third sack for Michigan. Michael Barrett, the grad student from Valdosta, Georgia, came streaking in against Jalen Milrow, a loss of eight. Boy, Michael Barrett times this pressure up perfectly. The C opens off the left side. Caden Proctor works out. Tyler Booker works in. And it's a straight shot for Michael Barrett to get the third Wolverine sack of the ball game. And coming into this game, Bama giving up 43 sacks. Protection been a real issue here early on. Third sack for Michigan. Fourth tackle for a loss. And it's second and 18 Alabama from their own 16-yard line. Milrow back to pass again. Milrow can't go anywhere again. It is the fourth sack of the game for Michigan. Jenkins and Junior Colson combining to bring down Milrow. Like a feeding frenzy out there with this front from Michigan. I mean, five-man pressure this time. Jenkins loops around. It's a really well put together bl uh, blitz stunt by Jesse Minter. And Jalen Milrow not having the opportunity to get any kind of comfort in that pocket whatsoever. Wow, this pass rush has been ferocious here so far. Alabama's been sacked four times now for minus 37 yards. It's third down and 23 from their own 11. Milrow quarterback run. He goes straight ahead, gets some of it back as he tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage, but he's met by Quinton Johnson after a run of 12 yards by Jalen Milrow. Watching this defense on film, Joe, like they're so well coached. Jesse Mentor, you know, he got some very, very good blitzes, and it incorporates the defensive line as well as the linebackers and safeties, and they come from all different areas and really put stress on opposing offensive lines. They execute their blitzes so well, and that's been on display here so far. The punter, James Burnup, is indeed back in the game after going down earlier in this game. Morgan is the return man for Michigan. He calls for the fair catch in the shadows now of this Rose Bowl near the 30-yard line as the sun is cresting just over the west side of this magnificent facility. And now one-third of the famed Rose Bowl field is in the shadow. And with 11.54 left in the second quarter, we are tied up with Alabama and Michigan seven apiece. You're listening to the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. Evan King. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Alongside Dusty Dvorak, I'm Joe Tessitor up in the booth here at the Rose Bowl where we just passed 3 o'clock local time in Pasadena. And with that, Quint Kesnick, comes unique shadows on the field. Uh, the sun is dropping basically over your right shoulder, Joe, and so it's creating a, a shattered effect on the near sideline where Michigan uh, lives. And the far side where I am right now, Alabama's got to squint across the field as the sun sets directly in their face. I'm behind their offensive line huddle right now, and this is not a good place to be. Alabama's offensive line has already given up four sacks in this game. That is the story of the game so far as Michigan takes over at their own 30-yard line, first down and 10, 11.54 to play in the game. Alex Orgy is in at quarterback. He is a good runner, had 22 yards rushing against Ohio State. He will take the snap, and of course it is a designed quarterback run as he struggles to get ahead, but he does pull Deontay Lawson for a few extra yards out to the 33-yard line. Quarterback counter to the near side, short side of the field. They continue to try to work this quarterback run game. We've seen J.J. McCarthy with a couple designed quarterback runs. Obviously, when you run the quarterback, you get an added blocker, a plus one in the run game. And so far, Michigan trying to utilize that advantage. 
Game is tied at 7-7. Michigan moving right to left in their home jerseys. The maize and blue framed against the sun-kissed sky here in Pasadena. McCarthy back in at cornerback. Drops back to pass, has time, goes to the right side. It was overthrown and out of bounds, intended for Cornelius Johnson, the six foot three target from Greenwich, Connecticut. One of their biggest targets. Tough to overthrow him, but this pass just sails on J.J. McCarthy. It's a good out route. He got some separation from Terry on Arnold. Protection was there as well. Has a good job by Blake Corum picking up a blitzer off the edge, but J.J. McCarthy with a miss on second down. So now it's third down and six, and perhaps this is an opportunity to hear the names of Dallas Turner or Chris Braswell, the phenom edge rushers for Alabama. Or will J.J. McCarthy convert? Third down and six, sprint right for McCarthy. Good pass protection, but the pitch and catch looking for Roman Wilson wasn't able to connect as Trey Amos had coverage on Wilson. Tight coverage on Roman Wilson. They're gonna roll the pocket, try to negate those edge rushers, sprint out to the right side, and just nowhere to go with the football. Coverage was clearly there. Tight man-to-man, -man, and J.J. McCarthy with a couple of off-target throws there on that possession. So Tommy Doman out to punt again. The second three and out for Michigan. The third punt for Tommy Doman. Caleb Downs is the return man for Alabama with his heels on the 24-yard line. And that is the unique shadow that you see the punter sitting in as now he skies away and hits a high hanger. So the fair catch is called for on the near sideline near the 30 yard line by the sensational freshman Caleb Downs. That is where Alabama will take over. We have 10.50 remaining before halftime. It is 7-7 here. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. You're listening to the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Yes, the college football playoff semifinal. Alabama has a 6-1 and one record in college football playoff semifinal games. Of course, this is Michigan's 21st Rose Bowl appearance. They've appeared in more Rose Bowls than any other Big Ten program. But this means a little more. The granddaddy of them all, the college football playoff semifinal with the two winningest programs in the history of the sport. Joe Dusty and Quinn, 7-7 game here, 10-50 remaining in the second quarter. Some of the big headlines so far, Dusty. Number one, the pass rush of Michigan. Mm. They have sacked Alabama four times. Been sensational. This Alabama offensive line, they had struggles all year protecting, and boy, Michigan is really taking advantage of it. We've seen it both with just a simple four-man rush, McGregor being able to beat Caden Proctor in one-on-one, -on -one, and then we've also seen Jesse Minter dial up some pressures. I want to see Alabama go a little max pro and take a shot down the field. Jermaine Burton is an excellent, deep, vertical threat, can attack the football. Isaiah Bond's got that speed. They're going to have to leave some extra bodies in to give help give Jalen Miller the proper time. But of all the things Jalen Milrow does throw in the football, the deep vertical shots is what he's best at. I'd like to see that here on this possession. Alabama first down at the 30-yard line. McClellan is the running back as they shift the tight ends and receivers to the left side of the formation. Bama in their white jerseys with crimson helmets moving left to right. Milrow in the shotgun. He's going to hand off to McClellan. McClellan off left tackle. He's met after just a gain of three. It was Junior Colson who sent him back. Junior Colson, who was born and raised in Haiti until he was nine years old, and he won the Lot Impact Trophy this year in college football. He's what I like to call a war daddy, Joe. Old school throwback. Played throughout the season with two casts on his wrists on his hands. He had a broken hand versus Purdue and refused to come out of the game. Just the kind of mindset and toughness Junior Colson brings to this defense. He made the tackle of McClellan after a gain of three yards. It's second and seven from the Alabama 33-yard line. Shotgun formation with Milrow and McClellan in the backfield. He motions Kobe Prentice. He gives to McClellan. McClellan is tackled for a loss. That front of Michigan led that time by Jalen Harrell coming in time and again. That is their sixth TFL. And Jalen Harrell, man, he is just always around the football and exactly where he needs to be to make a play. Quality, penetration, and another tackle for loss for this Michigan front. They have just been overwhelming 
this Alabama offensive line so far. Coming up on nine and a half minutes until halftime. Tied up at seven. Alabama moving left to right. Shotgun formation. Empty set for Jalen Milrow on third down and nine. Receivers are split. Two to the top. Three to the near side as the officials are going to award a timeout that was asked for by Michigan. A defensive timeout used by Michigan as Alabama was facing a third down and nine. So with 926 left before halftime with this playoff game tied at 7-7. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Joe Tessitore, Dusty Dvorak, and Quentin Kesnick with you here at the Rose Bowl. Michigan has the number two pass defense in the country. And Alabama quarterback Jalen Milrow only has one completion for 11 yards. And now Dusty is facing a third down and nine at their own 31. Yeah, the coverage has been good, but the pass rush has been exceptional here so far. The real question, can this Alabama offensive line protect? Can they give Jalen Milrow time to distribute the football? And what feels to me like a big third down this would mark three straight four and outs and it'll be the fourth three and out and just five drives here for Alabama so far Alabama is one of four on third downs in this Rose Bowl game 926 to play before halftime tied up 7 7 they are moving left to right it'll be a shotgun formation empty set for Jalen Milrow on third down and nine Three receivers to the near side in the shadows as they motion Law back. And it's going to be a quarterback run with Milrow. He tries to get three on the right side but can't find anything as Mike Sander still comes up with the tackle after just one yard by Jalen Milrow. And this Michigan defense is playing as advertised. Fake the jet sweep. Going to go quarterback count him to the back to the far side of the field. And what an outstanding job by Mike Sainer still coming downhill perfect position getting Jalen Milrow to the ground immediately on contact excellent open field tackle by the all Big Ten safety so that's the third straight Bama three and out the fourth of the game four times Alabama has been three and out James burn up on to punt as he's in the shadows and he is able to get it on no he is Pressured but barely gets it off and it takes an awkward bounce, but fortunately for Alabama it starts rolling downfield He was pressured that was nearly blocked We'll check the replay to see if Michigan may have grazed that ball there As it does go downfield for what ends up being a 52 yard punt. I was surprised the Michigan defender didn't extend and fully put his arms out. He would have had it a looked like punch. he was gonna take it off his foot he your would point. have. They came with the pressure and Burna barely yep. got it off, but it does roll downfield for a 52 yard punt. So Michigan will take over at the 17 yard line, their own 17 yard line with McCarthy and Quorum in the backfield. Out of the shotgun is JJ McCarthy, and now he brings Quorum over to his right, and that is where he takes the handoff off right tackle and gets extra leg drive all the way out to the 25 yard line. So it's an eight yard run for Blake Corum. He went a bunch set off the right side and it's a really good setup by Blake Corum. He hits it initially right there in the center of that Michigan offensive line. Jump cut to the right to get behind that bunch. How about the push we continue to see from this Michigan rushing attack? It's it's stark to me how much more physical Michigan has been on both sides of the line of scrimmage in this game so far. Second down and two from the Michigan 25. They're going right to left in their home jerseys, maize and blue. Corum, he makes a man miss in the backfield and then goes ahead for a first down where he is eventually tackled by Deontay Lawson. Justin Aboybe, the big defensive tackle, had a chance at a tackle for loss, but couldn't get Blake Corum. First down, Michigan. Aboybe got the penetration that he needed, but Blake Corum just kind of shrugs him off, pushes him to the side, and he gets up the field. He gets a nice pickup for another Michigan first down. Blake Corum has looked outstanding running the football so far in this ballgame. Big Blue has 128 total yards to Alabama's near 39. Seven 
10.08 to play before halftime. First down Michigan from their own 29-yard line. For him in the backfield, pistol formation with McCarthy. He gets the ball again, this time just a gain of two and a half yards as Justin Aboigby does make the tackle. Utilization of tight ends, so good by this Michigan offense. A.J. Barner, Colston Loveland, we see Max Bredesen. A lot of different formations, motions, shifts that we've talked about. Really stressing and making this Alabama defense have to be sound and communicate. Second down and eight, Michigan from their own 31-yard line. McCarthy, as they go with a roundabout orbit motion, fakes the short pitch, goes over the middle, and gets it complete to his tight end, Colston Loveland, for a first down Michigan. Colston Loveland, who was Michigan's co-offensive player of the year, with the 12-yard reception out to the 43-yard line. First down, Wolverine. Well, it starts with the protection. Plenty of time for J.J. McCarthy to sit in the pocket, survey the field, and it's a nice route by Loveland just to dig right over the umpire, pass on target, and boy, Colston Loveland so good catching the football. He is a wide receiver in a tight end's body. First down at the 42. Short pitch. They're going to throw back to McCarthy. Trick play. McCarthy throws it downfield and gets it complete to Roman Wilson. That play almost didn't happen as McCarthy had to go backwards and make a sensational catch just to then throw the ball downfield. And when he released the ball, he was driven hard into the turf by Dallas Turner and was slow and clearly affected getting up. Double pass. Donovan Edwards initially throws it back to J.J. McCarthy. Roman Wilson going to break across the field on an over route. It's an excellent job by J.J. McCarthy falling away, getting rid of the football as he gets hit, putting it perfectly to Roman Wilson. But the question really, is J.J. McCarthy healthy after that hit? It was a 20-yard reception. They're at the Alabama 38. They give it to Blake Corum off right tackle, and he is tackled at the line of scrimmage immediately by Jihad Campbell. Five minutes to play before halftime. Michigan marching. They're at the Alabama 38. It'll be second and ten. I bet somebody might want to help J.J. McCarthy. He's got grass all yes, in his face mask and in that, that shield of his after that hit from Turner. J.J. McCarthy looks the way your lawnmower blades look after a Saturday <laughs> afternoon mowing the lawn. He's got debris all over his helmet after being driven into the ground. It is second down and ten with four and a half minutes until halftime at the 38-yard line at Alabama as they give the ball to Edwards, and he goes nowhere. Tim Keenan clogging things up the 315-pound nose guard. It'll be third down and 10 as the clock is at 4 minutes and 20 seconds and counting down. Boy, Tim Keenan is strong and stout there in the middle of that Alabama front. He's got heavy hands, sheds the block, nowhere to run with the football. Third and long here. Can Dallas Turner... Can he create a pass rush on third down? Third down and 10 from the Alabama 38. Michigan threatening the score. They are 0 for 4 on third down. McCarthy in the shotgun with Donovan Edwards flanking him. McCarthy back to pass. Has time. Over the middle. Gets it complete. First down Michigan. Morris inside the 10. Striding to the end zone. Did he get there? Yes! Tyler Morris with a 38-yard touchdown for Michigan. 33 yards striding down the far sideline. And the Wolverines take the lead in this college football playoff semi in Pasadena. Well, I'll tell you this, J.J. McCarthy is just fine. Third down, no problem. Protection continues to be good. He finds Tyler Morris working on the linebacker, Deontay Lawson. It was a foot race. Morris won. J.J. McCarthy hits him in stride. And then it's Morris getting drugged down as he's trying to go in the end zone, reaching over and getting to pay dirt. Wow. What a third down conversion for Michigan. What an incredible drive by Michigan as the snap on the extra point is botched. The snap and hold is botched, and James Turner, the place kicker, has to run all the way back 20 yards just to jump on it. So Michigan, instead of a full seven-point lead, leads by six. It is 13 to 13-7 as they are unable to get the extra point. The snap 
was unable to be held by Tommy Doman, the punter. The holder just whips on the PAT. And with that, it's a six-point lead for Michigan. Whew. I got to tell you, Michigan looks incredible right now. They are Joe. playing gritty. They are playing fiery. And they are playing with a lot of desire. 100%. And, and the offensive line. Like the offensive line, they're getting movement, running the football between the tackles, on the perimeter. They're protecting J.J. McCarthy, something Alabama cannot do for Jalen Milrow. And there was so much hype coming in to the way Jalen Milrow had played the last five games, the 17 touchdowns, one interception. I felt like no one was talking about J.J. McCarthy. 25-1 and one coming in. He's 9-14, of 14, 115 yards, two touchdowns. And like the play on the double pass, the throwback, he's hit, falling away, and he locates a receiver under duress in stride. He has stepped his game up massively to start this Rose Bowl. McCarthy has two touchdown passes. Jalen Milrow has one completion. And Michigan, number one Michigan, leads 13-7. to seven. And while we have a break in the action, Let's send it to Kevin and Trevor in the studio. Gentlemen. All right, Tess, thank you very much. Uh, Dusty hit it right on the nail. It is Michigan's offensive line that looks good. Trevor, if you're Alabama, you're getting worked. That's the bad news. You're getting pushed around. Good news is you're only down six, though. What do you take away from the first half? Well, you're right getting pushed around. Michigan's averaging over five yards per carry on the ground. That's slowing down their pass rush. That touchdown pass to Morris was absolutely fantastic by the OL. Four guys rushed. They picked them all up, and Morris lined up on the left side, and he had time to run up and all the way across to almost the right sideline to catch that ball. Then when he turned up, he had the entire defense flank. If the offensive line of Michigan is not protecting like that, he doesn't have time to run that far across the field. Total yards in the first half for Alabama, 39. Today's trivia question brought to you by Dr. Pepper. It's not college football season without the delicious taste of an ice cold Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Only one time and a half under Nick Saban has Alabama been held under 50 total yards. Your trivia question, who was the opponent? Give me the answer in the second half. Tess, back to you, Dusty and Quint. Thank you very much, Kevin, as the sun now occupies only the far upper right corner of this Rose Bowl field on this glorious New Year's Day in Southern California, 13 to seven Michigan. After an eight play, 83 yard touchdown drive, let's go to the field to Quint. Far side of the field, I'm with the uh, Alabama defense where Tim Keene in the third, 96, their nose guard just got after it. The whole defense is in a huddle. Nick Saban comes over. Guys are kind of getting angry with one another. Coach uh, puts his hand in there. They put their hands up and say a cheer, but uh, clearly this defense right now, a little bit rattled. Michigan staying in their identity. They're so patient, Joe. They're nibblers. Their offense is like Novocaine. It'll put you to sleep. And meanwhile, the only way that Bama has been able to get into Michigan territory, Dusty, was from that muff punt. As Doman kicks away, and Law will return this from the goal line. Kendrick Ooh. Law, he was met hard by that coverage unit of Michigan out at the 17-yard line. As they are firing off in all ways. It was A.J. Barner who made the tackle on special teams how about this juice this emotion michigan players just going crazy after that big hit on the kickoff return this is this is important right here for alabama they need a first down they need to give their defense a little bit of a rest and going into halftime this drive could be very important just from a confidence of Jalen milrow and this offense so alabama starts in the shadows of this afternoon in Pasadena from the 16-yard line. First down and 10. Milrow in the shotgun, flanked by McClellan to his right. Play action. Milrow, remember, he only has one completion downfield. And now a tremendous effort from Isaiah Bond. And Isaiah Bond is able to get the second completion of the game for Milrow. That was so athletic by Isaiah Bond downfield. Massive. What I love, move the pocket, Tommy Reese, right? You're not protecting. You can't sit back down the pocket. Roll to your right. And the best throw we've seen all day, an absolute dime, hitting Isaiah Bond in stride right as he steps out of bounds. It goes for 29 yards. Alabama first down out to their 45-yard line. That was their first first down 
Since 9.41 to go in the first quarter, we've got 3.12 until halftime. Play action on first down. Tons of time. Deep shot by Milro. Downfield, but thrown out of bounds as Burton was striding down to the 10-yard line, and he was covered by Will Johnson. Incomplete. It'll be second and 10 from the Alabama 45. That's the deep shot we asked for last drive. Double move, and it's so well played by the corner Will Johnson. Tri Jermaine Burton does a really good job with his double moves. That was a stutter and go. He stuttered. Will Johnson set on it, but then recovered quickly. Burton was blanketed down the field. Michigan leads 13 to 7 with 3:04 before halftime. Second down and 10. Alabama going left to right. They're at their own 45-yard line. McClellan's the running back in the shotgun, flanking Jalen Milrow. Milrow play action. Time to pass. Gets it out to the near side as he goes to Jermaine Burton, who scoots out of bounds near midfield, and it'll be third down from there. Quick game. Ball out fast to Jermaine Burton. Well defended by Michigan, escorted him out of bounds very quickly. But just good to see Jalen Milrow. You know, the first throw, it was on the move. That throws quick game. Not as much sitting back, trying to ask that offensive line to protect this Michigan front. Third down and four for Alabama. They're at the Michigan 49. They're just one of five on third downs today. McClellan is the running back with Milrow. Third down and four for Alabama, moving left to right in their white jerseys and crimson trim. McClellan gets the call. It is well blocked, and he has a first down with a gain of five and a half yards off right tackle. Nice run again. Get behind. 77, the right guard, Jaden Roberts. Brought a pressure inside. They walked down Michael Barrett. He got caught inside. Really good job by C.J. Dupree, the tight end, securing that hole. And Jace McClellan getting enough to move the sticks. Best drive we've seen from Alabama since early on this ball game. Under two minutes and counting down to halftime. Michigan leads by six. First down and ten. Alabama at the Michigan 44-yard line. Moving left to right. Shotgun formation as they bring in the extra backer. And there was movement, pre-snap movement on Alabama. False start, number 56. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. 56 is a center, sent McLaughlin. That's the first penalty on Alabama. 143 until halftime. They trail Michigan by six points. It'll be a first and 15 for the Michigan 49-yard line. Michigan showing single high, a lot of bodies around the line of scrimmage. Looks like they're in man coverage. Loading up the box here on first down. Robbie Oots, the 265-pound fullback, eight sniffers in the game. Play action, Milrow on first and 15. A lot of time to take a strike downfield inside the 10-yard line, and it is denied. The pass was defended at the last moment by Rod Moore as he was covering Kendrick Law. Incomplete, it'll be second and 15. Alabama with 116 to play Michigan leading by six just a four-man rush excellent protection here by Alabama plenty of time for Jalen Miller to try to hit this deep shot down the field to Kendrick Law this ball Really kind of sailed, I thought, on Jalen Milrow, and it's a really good job by Law to kind of play defense because Rod Moore almost had an interception at the goal line. Roydell Williams comes in at running back on second and 15. Alabama at the Michigan 49-yard line, trailing by six points. Milrow in the shotgun. He's going to pass again on second and 15. Now he's going to tuck and run with pressure. Milrow gets free, has the first down before he is tripped up near the 33-yard line by Rod Moore, but he goes for a 17-yard run and a first down Alabama. Such a smart play by Jalen Miller. They're going to bring pressure here. It's man-to-man -man on the outside, and as the pressure comes, a massive gaping hole opens up in the middle. Jalen Miller makes him pay for 17. Quick to the line now, under a minute to play. First down Alabama as he goes over the middle and gets it complete to Amari Nyblak, his tight end as Nyblak is able to get the ball to the 26-yard line, and Alabama, with three timeouts remaining, is going to exhaust their first timeout with 48 seconds to go before halftime. They trail by six points. Michigan has scored two touchdowns, but they botched a PAT attempt on a bad hold. 48 seconds remaining, number one Michigan leading number 
for Alabama, 13 to seven, with Alabama piecing together a seven play drive that has gone 58 yards to this point. So important, this drive before halftime, just to put yourself in this position, be able to move the ball, get Jalen Milrow some confidence going. We've seen him hit a couple of different throws. The offensive line, better job protecting. We'll see exactly what they're able to cash in. But the other thing to remember with Will, Will Reichard, one of the best kickers in the history of college yes. football, you have already entered a very good situation as you are clearly inside of his range for a field goal. They are already at the 26 yard line. It'll be second and four when we come off of this timeout. 49 seconds remaining. Alabama has two timeouts remaining. Milrow is four of seven for 52 yards. He has been sacked four times but on this drive he has used his legs Roy Dell Williams is the running back out of the shotgun on second and five now an empty set and he goes to a receiver screen Isaiah Bond who doesn't get much at all only about a yard and a half that time the clock is counting down under 40 seconds and it'll be third down and three it's a good open field tackle by junior Colson on the quick screen here we go, half a minute till halftime. Third and three, Alabama. There's the snap to Milrow. Pressure off the edge, and he is sacked again for the fifth time in this first half. Jalen Milrow is sacked by Derek Moore this time. The sophomore from St. Francis Academy in Baltimore takes down Milrow in the closing seconds of this first half. Well, Derek Moore is gonna work on the right tackle J.C. Latham and they sugar inside that C gap. Latham checks inside, doesn't get back outside to Moore, and he's just a free hitter on Jalen Milrow. That's a busted protection by a veteran J.C. Latham. You've got to be able to know exactly what you're getting. It's a good job by Michigan. They tease that gap, drew J.C. Latham's attention, and it was Derek Moore coming off the edge. Eight seconds remain as Alabama will be attempting the field goal here. The timeout was actually used by Michigan. So eight seconds remain in this first half. They may have some clarity as to how much time is on the clock here. They may be changing that, but the big sack, that is undoubtedly the story of this first half. The pressure on Jalen Milrow and Michigan's ability to get to him. Five sacks of Milrow. Unbelievable. We still got two more quarters to play. It's going to have to be an adjustment. Tommy Reese, Nick Saban go in, have a good talk. Eric Wolford, very veteran offensive line coach. They're going to have to have some real discussion and figure out how they slow down this Wolverine pass rush. It'll be a 50-yard field goal attempt by Will Reichard here with 14 seconds remaining in the first half. He has made seven field goals of 50 plus yards in his career. Snap, hold, kick, well struck, good rotation as Will Reichert puts it through. One of the great kickers in the history, recent history undoubtedly of college football. The leading all time scorer in SEC history now makes the score Michigan 13, Alabama 10. A 50-yard field goal from Will Riker. He's money. Man, just confident as could be. He's done it for so long there at Alabama, and there was no doubt. When that ball left his foot, it was going right down Main Street. So the drive goes 10 plays, 52 yards. But Alabama and the pass protection once again gives way. And that big sack that came by Derek Moore and the active front of Michigan keeps them to just a field goal. Seven seconds remaining before halftime. And Alabama puts together a 10 play, 52 yard drive and a 50 yard field goal by Will Riker. Michigan has the edge in total yards, 199 to 96. As Riker will kick away and it'll go for a touchback. Joe Dusty and Quint with you on this glorious day in Pasadena. Alabama, 9 and 4 overall in college football playoff games. Of course, Michigan's third straight appearance in the CFP. Last year, they lost a shocker in the semis to TCU in the Fiesta Bowl, 51 to 45. We talked about this, Quint, you and I, in terms of the approach that 
Michigan took in the lead up to this game and all the coaches talked about a new refreshed approach compared to how they feel like they overanalyzed and perhaps overtrained in the lead up to past CFP semis. Here they've come out loose, fiery, gritty and confident and with that a 13 to 10 halftime lead. They look fresh and I think that's exactly to your point. Jim Harbaugh the philosophy coming in take a lot off their plate from a practice and physicality standpoint and boy did it pay dividends in the first 30 minutes of this ball game. Michigan looked more physical. They look fresher. Quite honestly, they look like the better team here in this first half. We'll see exactly what Alabama does to counter that coming up after the break. Remember, Alabama won the coin toss and they deferred, so they will receive the second half kickoff. McClellan got the scoring going for Bama to make it 7 zip. Then Corum with a touchdown reception. Morris with a touchdown reception. And moments ago, Will Reichert, a 50 yard field goal for Bama. Michigan leads 13 to 10. Now, here's Kevin Winter in the studio with the College Football Halftime Report. Tess, thank you very much. You, Dusty, and Quinn had a heck of a call in the first half, and what a game this has been. Trevor Maddich alongside as well as we are here for the College Football Playoff semifinals. We'll get Trevor's thoughts in the first half coming up. A half that was really dominated by Michigan's defensive line, their defensive front, that recorded five sacks, but... The score is only a three-point differential. 13 to 10. Give you some analysis of the first half coming up. Plus, we'll look ahead to game number two. We'll take a trip to New Orleans next. And the All-State Sugar Bowl, a preview of Washington and Texas. Game number one of the semifinals. First half is in the books. It's number one, Michigan, leading number four, Alabama. 13 to 10. This is the college football playoff semifinals at the Rose Bowl game. Presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Sports radio station. Brought to you by Tasty Dr. Pepper. We are settling the great debate. Best third quarter snack, hot dogs or nachos? You know my mantra, Doug. Uh, yes. Meaty early, early, cheesy, cheesy late. late. Well, it looks like we have a caller here to weigh in. Is this Chuck? Popcorn in the third is the move. What? You go with passive snacking after halftime. No, nope, it's nachos. Look, as long as there's an ice cold Dr. Pepper there to wash it down, I'm good with either. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Tax Act can think of a million things more fun than filing. But the Rose Bowl game, presented by Prudential, on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Alongside Trevor Maddich, I'm Kevin Winter. Halftime in Pasadena. Michigan leads Alabama 13-10. to Give you some analysis in the first half coming up. Alabama under 100 yards of total offense, but they only trail by three. Winner of this game will go on to Houston on Monday night, one week from tonight, for the College Football Playoff National Championship game. The winner of this game will take on the winner of game two, Washington and Texas. With a preview, we go to New Orleans and join the broadcast team alongside Kelly Stoffer. Here's Mark Kestisher. Kevin, we welcome you to New Orleans. All the folks clad in purple and burnt orange rang in the new year last night. And those same folks looking forward to a great game tonight, especially the folks in burnt orange, Kelly Stoffer. You know, it was about five years ago, Texas won the Sugar Bowl here. Everyone thought Texas is back. Well, they took a step back. Enter Steve Sarkeesian, the head coach now in his third year, and he's got them in the program's first college football playoff. I think it's a great thing to start with Steve Sarkeesian. The story I like is the story of restoration. He's told that, and it's deep, but he didn't allow himself to dream of this moment, being able to be the head coach of a team in the college football playoff. He's come full circle. Here he is. He had a plan. He's executed it perfectly. We'll see how they perform tonight. And Kalen DeBoer, who came out of Division II, three national championships for Washington, and this is his second year. They've been terrific. Kalen DeBoer's record as a head coach is unbelievable. And he's now one of the best leader of young men, I think, in college football. And that's the resounding theme you hear in this program currently. You know, we have a great quarterback matchup tonight as well uh, for Texas, their third-year sophomore, Quinn Ewers. He's going to go up against Washington's Heisman Trophy runner-up candidate, Michael Penix Jr. Well, those head coaches didn't get here without good quarterbacks. And Ewers off to Ohio State, but he really always had his heart in Texas. He's come back home again, playing extremely well, and I think he'll play well tonight. And Penix was really the pivot point for DeBoer's getting traction so quickly. They were together at Indiana, reunited in Seattle, and it's been an exceptional result. 
This is only the sixth meeting between Texas and Washington, but it's only been a year since the last one. Also a bowl game. The Huskies held on for a seven-point win over the Longhorns in the Alamo Bowl. But tonight, they're going to play for a spot in next week's college football playoff national championship game in Houston. Kevin, we're looking forward to kick down here in New Orleans right after the Rose Bowl. Mark Kestesher, Kelly Stauffer, going to be joined by Ian Fitzsimmons, Kevin Winter with you, Trevor Maddich, the All-State Sugar Bowl, game two of our doubleheader tonight. Let's dive deeper into this game. I think we both expect trench warfare like we're seeing here in the first half in the Rose Bowl, but just of a different style, don't you think? Yeah, it's been one-sided on Michigan's side. When you look at, for example, the five sacks, it's not that they're beating guys with a pass rush who are in front of them. They're being out-schemed, Alabama, by the styles of rushes, the stunts they're not able to pick up, the games off of each side. For a matter of fact, two of the sacks – were exactly the same, one off left tackle, one off right tackle. They brought a little guy inside the tackle. They brought a bigger guy outside the tackle. And the tackle was confused over which one he should block and didn't block either one. Right. You know, on the left side, you got a freshman, Caden Proctor. Okay, he'll get confused sometimes. On the right side, J.C. Latham is a first-round draft choice in a couple of months. And so the offensive line of Alabama mentally – is not able to handle the different schemes and different kinds of rushes and stunts that Michigan is throwing at them. All right, so that's this game here at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential. When we look ahead of the All-State Sugar Bowl, how will that game be decided in the, in the uh, line of scrimmage? You know, in the, that game will be decided by how the Joe Moore winning offensive line of Washington is able to handle those big defensive tackles of Texas. Washington is kind of miffed. They're mad. They're angry. They're offended that people are talking so much about how great the, the Tavondre Sweat of Texas is, Byron Murphy of Texas is. And that's where the game will be won and lost because in order for Washington to win this game, they're going to have to throw the ball well. They've got a pocket passer in Michael Penix Jr., and the way to stop that pocket passer is to push the interior offensive line back into his lap. Texas excels at that. Washington's very good at stopping that. Who wins that will go a long ways towards determining who wins the game. How does the secondary match up in this game? Because if both teams are going to try to have to throw the ball, because I don't think – I think you and I both aren't expecting a lot of rushing yards with the way the lines play. How does each quarterback deal with the secondaries that are thrown at them? Well, they're both going to have to be very careful what they do and how they do it because both secondaries are very good at interceptions. They both have 16 which ties both of them for fifth in the nation. I think Washington is the secondary people are watching the most right now because they give up a lot of yards, but that's because they're the only secondary in the nation that's had over 500 passing attempts against them. Think about that. 500 times they've had a drop back in coverage. Yeah, 500 plus. And so they give up a lot of yards, but it's only six and a half yards per attempt, which is good for third in the Pac-12. So they're pretty good on a per-pass level, plus all those interceptions. So if Quinn Ewers, the Texas quarterback, thinks that he, other teams are throwing for lots of yards, he can just drop back and sling it around. Those guys are ball hawks. Mishael Powell and Jabbar Muhammad each have three interceptions, but 10 Husky defenders have at least one. And so Ewers and Texas are going to have to be very careful about where they put that football. It is the college football playoff semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl coming up between Texas and Washington. Right now, according to the ESPN bet, Texas is a three-and-a-half point favorite. That's the number three team over the number two team with a total of sitting at 62-and-a-half. Mark Kestesher, Ian Fitzsimmons, Kelly Stoffer have our call as soon as we are done in Pasadena. We got a long way to go. Coming up next to the College Football Live Halftime Report, first half analysis, adjustment time in the second half. Michigan by three over Alabama. You're listening to the college football playoff semifinals at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app. Carlin versus Joe on ESPN Radio. If you had hard. Game nights. Thursday. The NHL on ESPN continues with a primetime battle in Beantown. Crosby and the Pens are looking for a statement win. Sidney Crosby cannot be stopped right now. Can Pasta and the Bruins continue firing on all cylinders? He scores! How about a little lunchtime pasta? Penguins Bruins, Thursday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. This is the College Football Playoff Semifinal at the Rose Bowl game, presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. 
Kevin Orton with you alongside Trevor Maddich. Halftime at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential. Michigan and Alabama are in a rock fight. Man, it's an entertaining rock fight. Wolverines by three, 13 to 10. A couple of stories of this game. Milrow back to pass again. Milrow can't go anywhere again. It is the fourth sack of the game for Michigan. Jenkins and Junior Colson combining to bring down Milrow. Like a feeding frenzy out there with this front from Michigan. They finished the first half with five sacks. Trevor Maddich, if you are Alabama offensively, you've talked about what Michigan has done defensively. How do you help out Jalen Milrow, your quarterback? Because when he drops back looking for longer than two or three seconds, he's getting crushed. He needs quicker outlets. I mean, one of those sacks, he had plenty of time to get rid of the ball. The problem is that all the receivers were still running deep down the field. And he had nobody underneath as a quick dump off if the pressure was arriving. So that's one of the things they need to do. I don't mean just start scheming lots of short routes because the defense will come up and jam that up. Keep the deeper routes there, but have somebody leak out or somebody break it off so there could be a quick short route underneath that zone. I'm with you. It did not seem like many routes downfield had a underneath or a, an intermediate route. A lot of them seemed to either be home run or take off and scramble. Right. Yeah. Or we're going short on different bubble screens and yeah. the defense is flying up to stop that. So there's ways schematically that they can give Milrow more opportunities to get the ball out quickly in a way that it's underneath the zone in space. All right, so Alabama has 96 total yards of offense. They had 39 prior to that last drive, which led to the field goal. Jalen Milrow, 5 of 8, 53 yards. He's been sacked five times. Michigan has the only turnover of the game, and it came with a muffed punt, and it led to the Alabama touchdown. Meanwhile, J.J. McCarthy has... Been a pretty good first half. McCarthy back to pass. Has time. Over the middle. Gets it complete. First down Michigan. Morris inside the 10. Striding to the end zone. Did he get there? Yes. Tyler Morris with a 38-yard touchdown for Michigan. And it's a 14, a 13 to 7 score there. Extra point. The snap was muffed. And that's going to be big because it's 13 to 10 at the half. J.J. McCarthy, 9 of 14, 115 yards passing, two touchdowns. What have you seen for him? This following, Trevor. His first pass of the game being picked off but overturned because the the uh, defender was out of bounds. Right, and that could have been just a, a football disaster. Instead, everything's back to normal. McCarthy has been playing exceptionally well. His offensive line has been giving him time. On that touchdown you just played, Kevin, the receiver, Tyler Morris, was on the left side. Mm -hmm. He had time to run up the field about five yards, then all the way across from left to right to the right sideline before he caught the ball. When he caught the ball over there, he had the defense flanked to the right, and he ran all the way up the sideline for a 38-yard touchdown. That's because the Michigan offensive line gave time for that receiver to run all the way across the field. And then the first touchdown for Michigan was Blake Corum, right? It was an eight-yard touchdown pass. And he was wide open as he ran to the left. Well, here's what happened. Corum lined up on the right side of the quarterback. There were two tight ends and a wide receiver to the left. Mm -hmm. Those guys ran up and inside and drew the entire defense inside, created a wall so that Corum from the right of the quarterback ran on an angle to the left through the offensive line behind that wall and was wide open for the catch. Michigan's scheming in this game on offense and defense has been brilliant. All right, about 60 seconds here. What do you think for second-half adjustments? What are you looking for? Well, Alabama needs to help the offensive line. Okay. And that means I expect them to have more maximum protection to account for all those guys coming and more quick throw opportunities for Milrow, plus more called quarterback runs for Milrow. In other words, not even zone reads. Just running back is the lead rusher, pull some offensive linemen out wide, run Milrow. For Michigan, I wouldn't change a darn thing until <laughs> Alabama stops it. I like that. Total yards, 197 to just 96, but it's only a three-point lead for the Wolverines over the Alabama Crimson Tide. That'll do it for us at the College Football Live Halftime Report. Second half in Pasadena is coming up next. This is the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app. You're listening to the College Football Playoff Semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Kevin Orchard with you, Trevor Maddich alongside. Halftime is just about done in Pasadena. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.
when you think of your go-to meal, what do you think of? Because if it's not the Wendy's Biggie Bag, with your choice of Junior Bacon Cheeseburger or Crispy Chicken Sandwich plus four-piece nugs, Junior Fries, and a small soft drink, Wendy's Biggie Bag hits every time. So stop by, grab your ride-or-die meal, because if there's one thing you can bet on, you can bet on Biggie. U.S. price and participation may vary. Includes choice of JBC or crispy chicken sandwich with four-piece nugs, junior fry, and a small soft drink. Third-party delivery pricing may be higher. Halftime, Holly Rowe with Jim Harbaugh heading to the locker room. Well, Coach, you said the line of scrimmage would mean everything. How do you assess how it's gone for your team? Really good. I mean, I love the three and outs we've got on defense, uh, putting pressure on the quarterback, and we're covering on the back end pretty darn well. Thanks so much, Coach. All right, there's Holly Rowe with Jim Harbaugh, Nick Saban with Laura Rutledge. All right, thank you. Coach, what adjustments do you want to see offensively in the second half? Well, the big thing is, is we got to protect the passer. You know, I mean, we've been sacked five or six times, and those are all drive stoppers. So, um, you know, we got to run the ball more effectively. We got to mix it up. We got to move the pocket a little bit. We got to do something to get him. Blocked up front because I think we could we got some plays down the field if we could just protect. Thanks, Coach. Right, Nick's, thanks. Nick Saban with Laura Rutledge. Uh, that's a lengthy checklist for the head coach of the Crimson Tide. Second half in Pasadena with Crink Kesnick and Dusty Dvorak. Here's Joe Tessitore. Thank you, Kevin. As he told Laura, they didn't run the ball better. They only have 43 yards rushing, does Alabama, as they trail number one Michigan by three, but they will be receiving the second half kickoff. Let's go down to the field to Quint. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Nick Saban mentioning the offensive line issues, five sacks. Meanwhile, his defensive line, zero TFLs, zero sacks. We thought coming into this game that their edge rushers would have more of an impact. The, the Crimson Tide, I think it's worth noting, they have three comeback wins on the season. Meanwhile, Jim Harbaugh has got to be pleased. From field level, Joe, incredible tackling. You think of, look at Alabama's yards after catch, minimal. All the contact to the running backs. Guys are getting uh, wrapped up and, and taken to the ground immediately. They've done a great job there. The one concern for Michigan, Joe, special teams. They fumbled a punt and they missed a PAT. And in a game like this, special teams could matter later. Yeah, that one point, they botched hold. And it cost them, and that's why it's a three-point margin. Now, to Quint's point, just eight yards after the catch for Bama wide receivers. It's been catch tackle all game for Michigan. The biggest glaring thing, and we all know, can Alabama make the adjustments up front and protect Jalen Milrow? Five sacks and a lot of pressure all throughout that first half is what Jesse Minter and his defense brought to the table. It's been an issue for this Bama offensive line all year. What can they get cleaned up? What can they get fixed? In this second half, it's of the utmost importance that they're able to give Jalen Milrow more time to distribute the football down the field. The record for quarterback sacks in a Rose Bowl game is nine, and that was reported by USC in 2004 against Michigan. And now Michigan already with five sacks as we kick off this second half of the college football playoff national semifinal. And Kendrick Law will field it from Alabama and take it out. And he only makes it out towards the 14-yard line. Sensational kickoff coverage by Michigan. Four three and outs for Bama in that first half as Jalen Milrow will take to the field a first down and 10 for Alabama from their own 14 yard line. Alabama wearing their white uniforms with the crimson helmets. They are going right to left as the entire Rose Bowl field is now in the shadows here in late afternoon. Jam Miller and Justice Haynes are the two running backs in the game for Alabama in a loaded backfield with Jalen Milrow out of the shotgun. Milrow's going to get it complete to Miller, but he's only able to get two yards out of the backfield as Rod Moore makes the tackle to be second and eight. Little play action, going to sneak Jam Miller. It's a very good pass catcher out of the backfield into the flat. Easy dunk down throw for Jalen Milrow, but Rod Moore sitting there in zone coverage, waiting on it. Excellent pursuit by Michael Barrett. Minimal gain on first down. Milrow only has 55 yards passing. Justice Haynes is the running back flanking Milrow to the left on second and eight from their own 16-yard line. Haynes gets the carry, catches a nice seam, and goes ahead for nine and a half yards, and that'll be a first down for Alabama. 
I had the Arkansas game earlier this season, got to go to practice, and I was going, who's that number 22? He's so shifty and quick. Oh, that's the true freshman, Justice Haynes. Tommy Reese told us earlier this week, told the TV crew, Justice Haynes is going to find his spots. A nice cutback off the left side behind Tyler Booker for the first down. There are some who believe Haynes is the most purely talented running back on the roster. Play action on first down. Milrow extends the play, is driven back to the 14-yard line, and then tries to get it to Isaiah Bond, but it's out of bounds, incomplete. It'll be second and 10. Well, the good news is the protection was there. Jalen Miller had plenty of time to distribute the football. Four-man rush. No one's able to get home. They do keep Robbie Oots in, and they kept in seven protection, only a three-man route, but no one opened down the field, nowhere for Milrow to go with the football. Alabama, second and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Haynes remains the running back with Milrow. Man in motion is Benson coming to the left side of the formation. Second down and 10. Milrow, here's the snap as he hands off to Haynes. Haynes looks to bounce off the left side, and he does so. And now you see the burst of speed, elite speed, that Haynes has as he goes ahead for 11 yards and a first down. It's also vision and then the jump cut. And he sees the open field and that burst acceleration through it on display for the second time on this drive. Excellent piece of running, changing direction, hitting it once again off the left side for a nice pickup for the true freshman. Jace McClellan now comes in at running back. The senior replaces the true freshman who provided a spark. First down, quick pass to Bond. Bond splits defenders and goes ahead for nine yards. And now, perhaps, the Alabama offense is finding just a little bit of a rhythm. It'll be second and one. Alabama out to their own 44-yard line. I like the motion of Robbie Oots, the tight end out in front to the perimeter. He gets a key block to help spring Isaiah Bond. Second down run, McClellan, who bounces it off right tackle, gives a stiff arm and makes his way past midfield. It's another first down for Alabama, a gain of nine for McClellan. Excellent cutback here by Jace McClellan. Cuts it all the way back to the far side of the field, and it was a foot race right on the edge with Sane Rasteel, Jace McClellan, a little stiff arm shove, and he gets to the edge, and he gets another first down. A nice start to the second half by the tie, Joe. They received the second half kickoff, and they've gone 39 yards in six plays. They have the ball at the Michigan 47. Alabama moving right to left, trailing by three early in the second half. It is a bad snap on the ground, and Milrow has to run back and jump on it at the 39-yard line. It was a bad snap by Seth McLaughlin, and Milrow had to recover it. Seth McLaughlin, that's down by his ankles. And, I mean, he's upset talking back to Jalen Milrow, but that's all in the center here. This ball way low and hot down on the ground. Milrow tried to scoop it clean. He couldn't initially, so he just ju jumps on top of the football to avoid any kind of disaster. But, wow. It's a loss of loss, 13 Joe. yards, Dusty. A 13-yard loss. And it's another bat snap. And Milrow has to go down, and then he's buried by the front of Michigan as Stewart and Colson were right on top of him. Josiah Stewart and Junior Colson quick to jump on Jalen Milrow after yet another bad snap. Again, this one should have been fielded by Milrow, but it's low right around his shins. It's not coming back. It's going kind of sideways coming back. He can't field it clean. Disastrous back-to-back -back snaps for McLaughlin to Milrow. Third down and 29. That was a loss of six more yards. All of a sudden, Alabama's going in the wrong direction. McClellan takes the handoff straight ahead, and he gets out to the 42-yard line. But it was third and 29 after the disastrous plays between Seth McLaughlin and Jalen Milrow. Gonna have to go over the side and get this figured out. I mean, what? Why there's that big of an issue snapping the football? Nick Saban is not happy whatsoever with the senior center after back-to-back -back bad snaps. So burn up on to punt. Morgan is set to return, puts his heels on the 10-yard line. Burn up. Punts away, skies this. Big hang time, big arc. 
as it is fielded at the five yard line by Morgan who spins his weight out to the 12 before he is tackled. That was a 54 yard punt by Burnham and a seven yard return by Morgan. Michigan will take over with 948 left in the third quarter. Michigan leads 13 to 10 as you're listening to the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. Chris Carlin, Joe Fortenball. This is Carlin versus Joe. Now, I'm going to sneeze. Hang on. That's what's happening here. All that move. The college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game. Presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Joe Tessitore, Dusty Dvorak, and Quint Kesnick with you. It is 13-10 Michigan here at the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game. And self-inflicted wounds on that last drive by Alabama, Quint. I, I am behind the Alabama bench. That's exactly right. And center Seth McLaughlin. The senior from Buford, Georgia, comes off the field, huffing and puffing with his scruffy beard, and there it awaits the offensive line coach, Eric Wolford, who goes after him. Bad snaps were an issue for the Crimson Tide in the first part of the season. They have resurfaced today at the most inappropriate time. Got to get that cleaned up. You cannot shoot yourself in the foot, especially given the way that opening drive was transpiring for Alabama. They're getting exactly what they wanted. Except you would think one of the most basic things snapping the football to the quarterback. So now Michigan takes over on their own 13. First down, they're moving left to right. Quorum loses about a half a yard there as there was a surge inside by Tim Keenan, the nose guard, and then the safety, Caleb Downs, cleaned it up for Bama. Nowhere, and I mean nowhere to go. Tim Keenan, stout, strong there inside. He's lost some weight throughout the course of the season. He had an excellent year on the interior of that Bama front. Nowhere to run on first down. Donovan Edwards comes in at running back, flanking J.J. McCarthy as they Flip the formation, strong side to the right now on second down and 10 from their own 13-yard line. McCarthy, short snap to the boundary to Edwards, who goes ahead for maybe two yards. It'll be third down as Lawson and Key in on the tackle for Alabama. Well, that was excellent speed to the perimeter by Deontay Lawson. They try the toss into the boundary, and Deontay Lawson from the backside comes in and takes the legs out from under Donovan Edwards and negates what could have been a nice pickup there on second down. This is going to be third down and nine. Michigan's just one of five on third down in the first half. Now a third and nine from their own 14 going left to right. Wearing the maize and blue home jerseys as the number one seed. Four-man rush against McCarthy who drifts all the way back to the goal line. He's looking for anything and then he throws it near the sideline. Michigan's arguing that this is a catch by Johnson. And they're still talking it over, but it is incomplete. Johnson made an effort on the near sideline, tried to drag the toes. Very close to being a catch. They may look at this, They Joe. may replay this. I think this is a catch here. What great concentration on the slide sidelines, dragging the toe by Cornelius Johnson. And if it is a catch, it'll be a Michigan first down as he made an incredible effort dragging his toe on the sideline. But the ruling on the field was that the pass was incomplete on what was third down and nine but if they say that that toe is in and that he had firm control it's going to be a first down Michigan the catch and concentration by Johnson excellent but how about McCarthy nowhere to go rolls all the way to his right to the near side from where we're standing buys time buys time waits Cornelius Johnson's got pretty tight coverage on him and McCarthy puts that ball only where Johnson can catch it as he's going out of bounds. I think they're going to overturn this one, Joe. Incredible effort by Cornelius Johnson, who is a rangy six foot three grad student. He grew up in Fairfield County, Connecticut, in the wealthy enclave of Greenwich, and went to Brunswick Academy, which is a powerhouse review, prep school in New England. The receiver completes the process of the catch with the left foot in bounds. It's first down, Michigan. So it is indeed a first down for Michigan on a tremendous, and I mean tremendous, effort by Cornelius Johnson to make that catch. I agree. McCarthy, too, though, with the, where he puts that football on the move, got to have it third down. 
McCarthy, an empty set and first down as now they shift Blake Corum as well as the tight end, A.J. Barner. First down from the 26. Corum's going to take it, patiently look for a hole, and then drive ahead out to the 29-yard line. A four-yard run for Blake Corum, tackled by Tim Smith. Not much running room once again. We talked a lot in the first half. There was a lot of push surges from the Michigan offensive line. It's early, only a couple of runs to start the second half, but the Alabama front looks much more solid and stout against this Michigan run to start the second half. Seven minutes and 40 seconds to play in this third quarter. Number one Michigan up 13-10 in this college football playoff game. Alex Orgy comes in at quarterback. He is the run package quarterback. Mullins flanks him. And it is going to be a quarterback pass as they fake the run. And Orgy runs out of options and darts out to the right before he is pushed out of bounds. So they bring in the running quarterback. Orgy fakes the run but had nowhere to pass to as Dallas Turner ran him down. He wanted to throw it to Kalel Mullings, the running back out of the backfield. But it was an excellent job by Terrion Arnold, the All-American cornerback, not taking the cheese, picks him up in man-to-man -man coverage, runs with him. Nowhere for Orgy to go with the football. That's well defended by Alabama. Technically, it's going to go as a sack and the first sack of the game for Alabama. So it's third down and nine Michigan from their own 27 as McCarthy is back in in the shotgun with Edwards as the running back. He's in the pocket and gets a good look over the middle of Tyler Morris, who's going to be short of the line to gain, but does pick up about seven yards there on that reception, but it'll be fourth down and the punt team will have to come out into the field. Tyler Morris, you know, there once again, able to create some space, crossing route, over the middle, that's one J.J. McCarthy wishes he had back. That pass slightly behind the intended target. He puts that out in front. There's running room away from Teron Arnold. He puts it behind him. Morris stumbles, short of the first down. Fourth punt of the day for Tommy Doman as Caleb Downs is back set to return at the 24-yard line for Bama. Doman punting left to right. He skies this down the field here at the Rose Bowl. A fair catch called for by Caleb Downs near the 20-yard line. We have 558 remaining in the third quarter. It is number one Michigan leading number four Alabama 13 to 10. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. You're listening to the College Football Playoff Semifinal at the Rose Bowl game, presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are high above the 50-yard line here at the Rose Bowl, the spectacular granddaddy of them all. Joe Tessitore alongside Dusty Dvorak and Quint Kesnick. Michigan leads 13 to 10. Quint, what can you tell us about the attitude down on the Alabama sideline? I, I sense a, a greater uh, sense of urgency. I, I sense you know, they got all their red shirts here and, and their non-dress uh, roster players. Towels are waving. They, they got a little bounce in their step now in the second half. And, and to me, this is the Alabama team that their fans are accustomed to seeing in the second half of the season. I, I just think they've woken up a bit. I like their body language. That's a great observation, Quentin. Here's the other thing, too. They've been here before. Last three times this Bama team has been down a half, they've come away with a victory at College Station. You also saw it against Ole Miss and Tennessee. They've been here before, and Nick Saban, one of his most proud things about this team is this team's resiliency. So love that they're responding here in the second half and clearly visible over on that sideline. You go back to 2007 when Nick Saban took over Alabama. When trailing at halftime, they end up with a 15 and 16 record. Mm. This year, three times they trailed at half. All three times they came back to win. So they take over at the 21. They give the ball to McClellan, and McClellan rolls ahead out to the 23-yard line, tackled by Mason Graham, the interior defensive lineman for Michigan. Love this defensive front for the Wolverines. They usually go four defensive tackles. They rotate four defensive ends. It's a legit eight-man rotation. They keep fresh bodies and throw throw them at you in different ways. Second down and seven from the 24. McClellan again gets the handoff. This time he goes ahead and picks up maybe three and a half yards. It'll be third down 
for Alabama as the clock goes under five and a half minutes to play in this third quarter, trailing number one Michigan by three points. Big Kenneth Grant inside. He goes almost 340. So tough to move. Not much running room there on second down on the inside for Alabama. This entire Rose Bowl now cascaded in shadows in the late afternoon here in Pasadena as Alabama with five minutes to go in the third quarter facing a third and four. Jalen Milrow is now flanked by Jam Miller in the backfield. Bama moving right to left in their white jerseys. Crimson helmets and that's an incomplete pass as Milrow was trying to lead Jam Miller on a swing pass and put it far too far out in front. And just, incomplete. And Josiah Stewart, the far side defensive end, he's going to peel and go with Jam Miller as he just goes out in the flats. Just a quick flare route as Milrow gets the ball in his hands quickly. It was well covered and Jam Miller wasn't even ready for the football. That is the fifth, the fifth three and out for Alabama. James Burnup, the six foot six Australian punter, is on the field again for his sixth punt of the day. Morgan is the return man for Michigan as he is inside the 20 yard line, lets it bounce and it takes a very good Alabama bounce down to the 11 yard line. So a big punt from Burnup. That goes for 62 yards that field flipping punt and with 441 left in this thriller in the third quarter it is 13 to 10 Michigan this is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's at Granger we're for the ones who this is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Alongside Dusty Dvorak, I'm Joe Tessitore up in the booth. Quint Kesnick is down in the field of this Rose Bowl game, the college football playoff national semifinal between number one Michigan and number four Alabama. Michigan leads 13 to 10. They get the ball here at the 11 yard line. Their last three drives have started at their own 17, their own 13, and now their own 11 after the long punt by Alabama. 4.41 to go in the third quarter. They're moving left to right in those home jerseys of maize and blue with J.J. McCarthy in the shotgun and Blake Corum, the running back. Three receivers to the near side as McCarthy moves Corum over to that side and he's going to pass on first down gets it out quickly it's incomplete he tried to go underneath but could not connect with his tight end A.J. Barner as he was covered by Caleb Downs and A.J. Barner such a big target he's 6'6 he's 251 just a simple hitch there from the inside and it's so tightly defended by Caleb Downs man to man coverage over the top right where he needs to be. Really good defense by the true freshman. Second down and 10, Michigan from their own 11 yard line. 437 to play here in this third quarter as they have a three point lead. Remember, they missed an extra point when the hold was bobbled and they could not convert it. They are going to run Edwards straight ahead. He only gets two yards max against that Alabama front with a Boyd B and Lawson. And now a big third down opportunity for the Alabama defense to get off the field. Continuing to see the motions, the shifts, especially from the tight ends of this Michigan football team. And they try to pound it up in between the tackles here once again. That's the third straight time. Just no running room and no push provided by this Michigan offensive line. The Bama defensive front is winning the battle of the trenches here in this third quarter. Third down and eight for Michigan. Out of the shotgun is McCarthy. They are two of seven on third downs five man rush and that's incomplete he tried to go on the slant to Morgan who is the number two receiver to the top but he's unable to connect so Michigan's going to trot off the field they only got two yards on that position they're going to have to punt away yes, Samaj Morgan he's actually wins inside pass just goes right through his hands the true freshman got to make that catch I mean Joe he can't throw it any better than that he hits him in stride Ball literally goes right through the hands of Samaj Morgan. And a good chance for Caleb Downs here to put Bama in prime field position as Tommy Dolman's going to be 
punting from his own end zone. He is three yards into his end zone as he's going to be punting left to right. Strikes it well, but it is going to go outside the numbers and take a bounce. Unreturnable as it goes just beyond midfield, and that is where Alabama will take over with 344 to play in this third quarter. Alabama will have the ball trailing by three points after the 42-yard punt that went out at the Alabama 45-yard line. Crimson Tide impressed with the way they've come out. They've responded. Defense has really stepped it up. And Michigan just struggling to get anything right now. We've seen Alabama have some success running the football, especially that initial drive before the bad snaps. I'd like to see them get back to that. Justice Haynes had a couple of the better runs we've seen so far today on that opening possession in the second half. We'll see if Tommy Reese gives some more run to his true freshman running back. We will find out in just a moment. But first, let's get to Kevin and Trevor in the studio. All right, Trev, what are you seeing here in this ball game other than Alabama is just shooting themselves in the foot? Yeah, it seems like the worm is turning a bit in favor of Alabama. In the first half, Michigan was dominating, especially in the trenches on both sides of the ball. Alabama, their first drive coming out of halftime, they were moving the ball. But like you mentioned, they had two low snaps. They ended up with third and 29, and that drive ended up with absolutely nothing. But it feels like if Alabama can stop self-destructing, they've got something going on. Quint brought up the, uh, the, the snapping problems out of the shotgun earlier in the year for the Alabama Crimson Tide. An article was posted on social media. Nick Saban was asked back in September, hey, how do you explain the, the, the snap problems? In September, he said, that's a good question. I don't think he's saying that's a good question now. He's probably saying a lot of other words that I can't say that get me in trouble. How does this game get decided, considering it's only a three-point game? Well, it, it could go either direction. It, it depends on which team executes the best. That was Michigan in the first half, but now Alabama sees what Michigan's doing, and what they're doing is not that complicated. And so if Bama can execute against what Michigan's up to, they've got a good chance here. 220 yards of offense for Michigan, just 129 for Alabama. Yet with under four, uh, under four to go in the third quarter, it is only a three-point game. Back to Quinn Kesnick, Dusty Dvorak, and Joe Tess at the Rose Bowl. Thank you, Kevin. Alabama, their eighth time playing in the Rose Bowl game. Ninth time here, if you include the 2010 BCS National Championship, a game they won with Greg McElroy at quarterback. Of course, Michigan won a national championship here in winning the Rose Bowl game. That happened in 1997. Michigan has nine national titles overall, but only two in the modern era, 1948 and 1997. And here they are late in the third quarter as the number one seed in the college football playoff with a three-point lead over Alabama, who has the ball first and ten at their own 45-yard line. Been a defensive battle here so far. Just what a nose tackle order, Joe Tessitore. <laughs> Physicality. Toughness and dominant defensive play has been the story of this ball game. Alabama only has 129 total yards. Justice Haynes, the true freshman running back, is in. We have seen some flash moments from him in the second half. Milrow's going to run it himself off the left side. Milrow has room and goes ahead for nine yards. It doesn't take much for Jalen Milrow to accelerate and get upfield. Well, so read. And you talked about earlier Justice Haynes having so much success. That backside defender, Braden McGregor, he closes strong, and it's a perfect read by Jalen Milrow to tuck it, get to the perimeter, and get a quality pickup on first down. Second and one now after the nine-yard run from Milrow. Haynes remains the running back, flanking him to the right. Alabama goes right to left. Here is Haynes. Haynes off left tackle. Haynes inside the 40, and Haynes skirts out with a first down for Alabama after a very good-looking eight-yard run from the extremely shifty and fast, quick-footed Justice Haynes. Alabama's offensive line is really digging in. The left tackle, Caden Proctor, he struggled in pass protection, not struggling there, opening up a big hole for Justice Haynes. What a start to this second half for the true freshman running back. He has changed the running game for Alabama. He's averaging 9.3 yards per carry. They are at the Michigan 38-yard line. Play action on first down. Milrow is chased back. Milrow looking to survive, and he runs straight ahead and weaves his way. Jalen Milrow weaving through Michigan for a 10-yard run. He was going to be sacked. All of a sudden made a quick decision and gets 10 yards for the tie. Wow, what a play 
by Jalen Milrow. It's Cam Good, the big nose tackle, who bursts free through the middle, looking like he's going to sack Jalen Milrow, but he jukes, he jives, he makes a miss. You see the burst, and he picks up a first down. Incredible individual effort by Milrow. First down, 28-yard line. This time he hands off to Haynes. Haynes looking for something straight ahead. He's met by the Michigan linebacker and driven back after a three-yard gain as the strong safety as well. Quinton Johnson came in for that run fit. Two minutes to play in this third quarter. It'll be second and seven as Alabama is marching. They are at the Michigan 25. Jalen Milrow with a spectacular play with his feet moments ago. Bama had five first downs in the first half. That's it. Five. They already have five first downs in this third quarter. Jace McClellan comes in at running back. As Milrow is in the shotgun, the ball is at the 25-yard line. Bama going right to left here in the third quarter, trailing by three. Milrow to pass on second and seven. Has time, goes underneath, and is able to connect with Isaiah Bond for a first down for the Tide. As Isaiah Bond gets it to the 16-yard line, first down Alabama. Zone coverage on the back end by Michigan, and Isaiah Bond smartly sits down the soft part of that zone coverage, and a good find by Jalen Milrow. What I really like from Bond, he catches the football, he gets north and south immediately to pick up enough to move the chains. First and 10 Alabama from the Michigan 16 as they move right to left, looking to either tie it or take the lead against number one Michigan. Milrow in the shotgun, flanked by McClellan to the left. Man in motion is Malik Benson as Milrow is going to run it himself, looking for a block, trying to direct traffic, but he couldn't get that block and is forced out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage by San Rastil and Josh Wallace. Good play of pursuit by the Michigan defensive front. It really was because Jalen Milrow had a full head of steam running to the sideline and Josh Wallace really fought as hard as he possibly could to keep that outside arm free and not allow Milrow to get to the perimeter. Really well done by that Michigan defense giving Jalen Milrow, not allowing him to get to the edge. Clock is counting down to 23 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Second down and 10. Alabama at the Michigan 16, trailing by three. Shotgun formation with Milrow, and now a lot of finger pointing as there was some pre-snap movement on the Alabama side. False start, number 52, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. 52 is the outstanding sophomore left guard, Tyler Booker from New Haven, Connecticut, and they're going to go back five yards. That's just the second penalty this afternoon in this Rose Bowl game on Alabama. Just a slight flinch by Tyler Booker. Hard count by Milrow, and he just slightly flinched. Final seconds of this third quarter counting down as Alabama's in the midst of a six-play drive threatening to score. We have an absolute thriller going down in the granddaddy of them all. Defense is winning the day, but Alabama's finding a little bit of momentum at the end of the third quarter. The score is number one, Michigan 13. Number four, Alabama 10. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. Oh, not this song again. Hello, Sarah. You're listening to the College Football Playoff Semifinal at the Rose Bowl game, presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. It has been a pressure-packed, defensive-minded thriller of a game here in the College Football Playoff Semifinal at the Rose Bowl game, the granddaddy of them all, the 110th playing of this American Classic as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Dusty Dvorak. Down in the field is Quint Kesnick. Alabama trails by three against number one Michigan. It's 13 to 10. Teams are four and 22 in the college football playoff when trailing after three quarters. Alabama has two of those four wins in history. Can they do it here? A second and 15 for Bama going left to right. Milrow in the shotgun. He's going to keep it himself. Run straight ahead. Jalen Milrow keeps his balance inside the five. It is first and goal tied. Well, Jalen Milrow has taken over this drive and this second half. Downhill running, 
as he gets behind Tyler Booker, who pulls out in front, Robbie Oots, and a big time run by Jalen Milrow. First and goal. Here's McClellan into the end zone off right tackle. Alabama takes the lead two plays into the fourth quarter. Jace McClellan with a three yard touchdown run after Jalen Milrow made that sensational run to put them in position. And Alabama has the lead over number one Michigan. Dominant up front. Big gaping hole off the right side of the Alabama offensive line. Jace McClellan saw it, burst, and gets into the end zone. Excellent way to cap off the drive for the tie. And now Will Riker with a big extra point, and he slices it between the uprights to push the margin to four. Remember, Michigan botched a PAT. So it's now a four-point lead for Alabama after Riker gets the PAT. But what a sensation. Absolutely sensational run by Jalen Milrow to open up this fourth quarter. It was a sensational run, but it was also extremely well blocked. Off the right side, J.C. Latham. They also moved Kate Proctor over to the right side. They came everything down. They come back. They pull Tyler Booker. They bring Robbie Oots. And then it's just downhill running from Jalen Milrow. And you can feel it this entire second half. Joe, the Alabama line of scrimmage, the first half, I talked about a lot. Michigan was winning the line of scrimmage, both sides of the ball. The second half, it's completely flipped. It's the Alabama defensive front giving Michigan nowhere to run, and the Alabama offensive line opening up holes and giving their ball carriers room to run. Everything is completely flipped along the line of scrimmage. And now Riker kicking off after he had the extra point that gave Bama a four-point lead. And Quint, you mentioned it moments ago, that feeling on the Alabama sideline of gathering momentum. And specifically their quarterback, Jalen Milrow, once again steps up in the big moments. This is a young man who got benched earlier in the season against South Florida, but his improvement has defined the transformation of this Crimson Tide team. And now with the game on the line at crunch time, you sense this is almost like a high school football game. Just give the ball to Jalen and good things will happen. Best player on the field playing at his absolute best. 4.30 to go in the game. And now Michigan trails. Blake Corum on the run off the left side and he is gobbled up by Dallas Turner on a first down run by Michigan as he only goes for one yard, second and nine now for the Michigan 26, clock counting down. Nowhere to go, and Dallas Turner, who was really not involved much at all in the first half, does an excellent job setting the edge, giving nowhere for Blake Corum to go with the football. Alabama defense playing with a ton of confidence and momentum right now. Blake Corum, the two-time first-team All-American running back for Michigan. Only getting one yard there. Tight splits in formation for Michigan on second and nine with 12 personnel. Play action. McCarthy, he was hit as he was trying to throw the ball, and it goes incomplete as Justin Aboybe came down on J.J. McCarthy, and now this Alabama defense is all fired up. J.J. McCarthy stepping up in the pocket. It looked like he wanted to find his big tight end, Golden Loveland, across the middle of the field. He gave it one hitch, tried to step up, and a boy B gets off the block and a big hit as he takes McCarthy to the turf. Third down and nine for Michigan from their own 26-yard line. Shotgun formation, McCarthy flanked by Edwards to the left. Three receivers to the top, one to the bottom. Third down and nine, man in motion inside. Four-man rush against McCarthy. He's backed up to the 15. He goes underneath, incomplete. He was looking for Donovan Edwards, who would have been well short of the line of the game, and he dropped it. So just like that, the Bama defense comes after McCarthy, and they shut him down, and Michigan's putting away. Kevin Steele dialing up some pressure. Donovan Edwards out in the flat, should have caught the football, lets the ball come to his body, takes his eyes off the ball, looks at the defender barreling down on him, and he drops it. Back-to-back -back possessions in for Michigan with drop passes by pass catcher. Tommy Doman on for his sixth punt. Ball at the Michigan 26-yard line. Caleb Downs has his heels at the 29. 
It is a knuckler of a punt, and they're going to poison scatter oh. it. Oh, that hit a man. It took an awkward bounce. Alabama jumps on it, but they are very fortunate as drifting back into coverage. It hit an Alabama player, so there was a moment where Michigan had an opportunity, but the true freshman, Caleb Downs, who has such a high football IQ, was able to jump on it. Antonio Kite, number 12, a backup defensive back who plays on punt return, touched the ball, and Caleb Downs was very smart to jump on it. It's going to be Alabama football, first and 10 with a four-point lead here in the fourth quarter. We have 13-32 to play. Alabama has a 17-13 lead over number one Michigan. As you're listening to the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. This is the College Football Playoff Semifinal at the Rose Bowl game, presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. The Alabama side of this magnificent Rose Bowl in Pasadena is roaring. They have captured momentum, they have taken the lead, and now they have the ball with 13.32 to play in this national semifinal at the Rose Bowl game. Joe Tessitore and Dusty Dvorak up above the 50-yard line calling the action as Quint Kesnick is down on the field. Michigan trails in the fourth quarter. The last time that happened was December 31st of last year when they lost to TCU in the CFP semifinal. This is new territory, new pressure, new adversity for these undefeated Big Ten champs. Justice Haynes is the running back for Alabama. Milrow in the shotgun as the quarterback as it's first and 10 from their own 33-yard line. Milrow, short pass to the near side to Prentice. And Prentice, with a quick step, bursts upfield immediately out past the 45-yard line for 13 yards and an Alabama first down. And it's amazing. Now that Alabama's established a rushing attack in the second half, Michigan overcompensating for that flying downhill. And it's a simple Kobe Prentice coming across the formation, play action, hit him in the flats, a lot of green grass out in front. Nice play call on first down. 21 personnel, two running backs, Jam Miller and Justice Haynes flanking Milrow as they're going to run Milrow as he breaks the tackle, goes to the left side. The ball is out! The ball is loose on the ground! The ball is out and Michigan has recovered it! Michigan gets the ball just past midfield. Scooping it up was Josh Wallace, the cornerback. Milrow made a, a move to the left. He lost control of the ball as he was stumbling down. And Michigan gets the much-needed turnover. You mentioned it. As Milrow starts to stumble just outside the far hash, it's Quentin Johnson who comes in and punches the ball out, knocks the ball loose, and it's Wallace sprinting to the football and gets on top of it. What a huge, game-changing kind of play here early on this fourth quarter. A Outs forced fumble by Johnson, a recovery by Wallace. Awesome job by Johnson to stay with that, be in position, and get his hand on the football and get it out. Michigan takes over at their own 49-yard line. Trailing by four, 12.47 to play. Michigan going right to left, cresting that offense on the Rose Bowl logo. And they get it complete to the near side to Wilson. Wilson inside the 35. Roman Wilson with a big play for the Wolverines. And now Michigan with a 20-yard completion, and they are in business. When it's a busted coverage, Roman Wilson comes in motion. He just stops right in the flats outside the numbers. Malachi Moore, Kool-Aid McKinstry yelling at each other. Quick pass to the near side. Cornelius Johnson can't find much, just fighting his way back to the line of scrimmage where Caleb Downs, the safety for the tide, makes the tackle. 12-20 to play. Clock counting down. Second and 10, Michigan. They're at the Alabama 31-yard line. They are going right to left, trailing by four. Number one team in the country, number one seed in the college football playoff. Trailing Alabama by four here with just over 12 minutes to play. Corum in the backfield with J.J. McCarthy, who's under center now on second and 10. Short pitch, 
Oh, and they go with the flea flicker, but it was misplayed, and J.J. McCarthy has to fall on the ball. It's going to go as a loss of yardage. He gave it to Corum. Corum looked to flip it back, but the flip was sloppy and short, and McCarthy had a jump on the ball. That is a loss of seven yards for Michigan. Sharon Moore goes with the flea flicker, and Corum just rushes that Joe. He went way too quickly, and when he turned to flip it back, it was well short of J.J. McCarthy. Wisely just jumps on the ball. Third down and 17 now for Michigan from the Alabama 38-yard line. 11-18 to play in the game as they trail. Wide receiver screen Morgan. Morgan trying to find some traction as he works his way to the 31-yard line, and it'll be fourth down from there. A seven-yard completion to Morgan. Let's send it down to Quinn Kesnick on the field. Yeah, real quick, James Turner, who's had an outstanding season kicking field goals. I thought in warm-ups he was having some issues slicing the ball right. He's got a really strong percentage, Joe, as you know, but he just did not look like himself in pregame warm-ups. Well, and Tommy Doman struggled holding the ball on the missed extra point. Let's see if they get a clean operation. Snap, hold, kick. And it is no good. The 49-yard attempt by Turner is off to the left. Wide left by James Turner. And Alabama, after they fumbled the ball away, does not give up any points as James Turner just had it leak off to the left from 49 yards away. Such intensity and drama here in Pasadena with it all on the line. And with ten and a half minutes to go in this game, it is 17 to 13 Alabama. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. Listening to the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game, presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. What an afternoon here in Pasadena. Joe Tessitore, Dusty Dvorak, and Quint Kesnick with you at the college football playoff semifinal, the Rose Bowl game, where Michigan's kicker, James Turner, who hadn't missed a field goal since September 23rd, he just missed a 49-yarder. Dusty, he had made 13 straight field goals. And Quint was spot on. He just slightly off before the game. He was slightly off there. You gave me an unbelievable uh, clear-cut analysis of exactly what transpired in the break. The snap was a little bit high, and everything was just a little bit off as that kick was pulled left and never really online to have a chance to make it through. And what a job by the Bama defense, Joe, after that massive takeaway that Misko was able to get for no points to come on the board. What a win for Kevin Steele's defense on that series. Remember, Jalen Milrow was running the ball when he fumbled. Michigan got it. They had great field position. They came away empty. And now, 10 and a half minutes to play. First down, Alabama from their own 31-yard line. Milrow in the shotgun, flanked by Jace McClellan to the left. They're on the far boundary. As they're going to give it to McClellan, who patiently looks for a block and finds just enough of a seam to get out to the 35-yard line. A gain of four yards by Jace McClellan. Again, more good movement off the right side of that offensive line. J.C. Latham, Jaden Roberts can't say enough about the job of Jaden Roberts the latter half of the season and at times here in this game. That right side has been downright dominant. Second down and six, Alabama from the 35-yard line with McClellan remaining as the running back. They're on the near hash. They're moving left to right in their white uniforms with the crimson helmets, trying to topple the number one seed in the college football playoff, Michigan. McClellan going to try to bounce it off left tackle. He gets a good block, keeps his balance, spins free. Chase McClellan out past midfield. Oh, my, what balance from Chase McClellan. Rod Moore missed the tackle, and McClellan goes for 17 yards and a tied first down. Well, how about the tight ends here? It's C.J. Dupree, Robbie Oots, 
McClellan's going to run right off tackle behind those guys. And a missed tackle by Rod Moore in the open field. Jace McClellan just too strong. And the contact balance you spoke of as he spins out of the attempted tackle, gets outside, and a huge pickup as they cross the 50-yard line. Bama and Michigan territory with a four-point lead. 9-10 to play in this college football playoff national semifinal. Bama on the go. And now they get it quickly out to the top of the field to Jermaine Burton on a short pass. And then the Michigan defense closes on him immediately as Josh Wallace was in on the tackle, as was Josiah Stewart. It just goes for three yards. Jermaine Burton is going to be second down and seven. We have under nine minutes to play with a running clock. Pursuit to the football by Josiah Stewart playing defensive end. He's out of the stack immediately getting out there to help aid in a minimal game. They're going to call this second down and eight. Alabama at the Michigan 46 yard line. Eight and a half minutes and counting to play. Alabama with a four point lead, 17 to 13, going left to right. Milrow in the shotgun. Man in motion is Bond as he comes orbit motion and wraps around the backfield. And it's going to be a designed quarterback run as Milrow goes off left tackle and rolls his way near the 40 yard line, tackled by Stewart. They gave the look of a pass. Milrow kept it himself and goes for five yards. It's going to be third down and three as we come upon eight minutes and counting remaining in this game. You're all over it. Isaiah Bond, that orbit motion. They fake as if they're going to throw just a little swing out to him into the flat. And it's really a quarterback counter back to the far side of the field. Josiah Stewart, really nice job getting off that block and getting Milrow on the ground. Third down and three, Alabama on the far hash with Miller in the backfield with Milrow on third down and three from Michigan 41 yard line. They're going to hand it off to Miller. He's sweeping to the right side. He's got a big block. He's got a first down. He's down to the 30 yard line. Jam Miller with an 11 yard run and it's another first down for Alabama. And once again, yet a, a, a tight bunch to the right side of the offensive line. They pull the right tackle, J.C. Latham attacking the perimeter downhill. They continue to run off that right side and a big pickup by Jam Miller. Flag is down. Flag is down the offensive backfield as Bama was lined up for the first Illegal down play. substitution, offense, 12 players were in formation. That's a five yard penalty. Still first down. So a moment of organizational sloppiness from Tommy Reese's offense and Nick Saban's offense. That'll back them up with a five-yard penalty. It'll be first down and 15 from the Michigan 35. Seven minutes and 12 seconds to play. Alabama with a 17 to 13 lead. They're going left to right in those white jerseys and crimson helmets. They're on the near side hash. Milrose in the shotgun. Haynes is in the backfield. They motion Dupree, the tight end, to come to a tighter formation. A blitz off the edge, but Milrow gets it out to the near side and complete to Burton for a very short gain as Keon Saab was quickly there to make the tackle. But the clock continues to march down to six minutes and 45 seconds, only one yard to Burton. They brought a, a corner pressure. Will Johnson was the corner over there on Burton, and he blitzed off the edge. Good identification by Milrow as he tries to get it out, replace the blitzer, throw it to Burton, but excellent pursuit by Sav to get outside and give a minimal game. Under six and a half minutes to play. Alabama, second and 13 from the Michigan 33. Justice Haynes, the running back with Jalen Milrow. Man in motion is Prentice to the near side. Near hash as Milrow looks to pass just a short pass to his tight end, C.J. Dupree, who can only go ahead for three yards. He was tackled by Michael Barrett. We are coming under six minutes to play in this national semifinal here at the Rose Bowl game, and Alabama has a 17 to 13 lead, but they are facing a third down and nine. Absolutely critical that Michigan holds them to a field goal attempt. 100%. Now, Nye Black comes in, their best pass catching tight end. He's caught some big passes throughout the year for Alabama in key third downs. I also look for Jalen Milrow as a runner in this spot as well in a crucial third down here in the fourth quarter. They're just three of ten on third down. This is a third and nine with five and a half minutes to play. Milrow back to pass. He is pressured and he is sacked again for the sixth time, but the first time in the second half. The Michigan defense gets to him again when they absolutely had to, and it was Braden McGregor. Braden McGregor, the senior for Port Huron, Michigan, with another sack. And Brayden McGregor typically outside as an edge. He's lined up inside over Booker. 
and they, the outside pressure forces Jalen Milrow up, and it's McGregor right there. Nye Black was a shallow crosser, could not be identified by the quarterback. Will Riker made from 50 yards. This is going to be from 52 yards. A 52-yard field goal attempt by Riker. Snap, hold, excellent kick, pure rotation, and through. Will Reichert with the big bomb of a leg nails it from 52 yards out and Alabama has a touchdown lead 20 to 13. A 52 yard field goal after he hit from 50 earlier and with 441 left in the game. It is Alabama 20 to 13 on top of number one Michigan. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. This is the college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN radio and the ESPN app. We now pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the college football playoff semifinal, the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Wendy's. This is the 110th. Rose Bowl game and we are honored and thrilled to bring it to you Joe Tessitore Dusty Dvorak and Quint Kesnick and moments ago we just saw the big leg of Will Riker do it again and with a 52 yard field goal he just gave Alabama now a seven point lead Bama's up 20 to 13 with 441 to play Riker on to kick away left to right as Michigan will have an opportunity Morgan is back to return but it's well over his head for a touchback. You touched on the Riker field goal, and it's really been special teams. That's the story of this football game. A muff punt early in this ball game by Samaj Morgan that led to an Alabama touchdown with a short field. Riker draining two, one from 48, one from 52. Remember the, the bad snap on one of the extra points by Michigan. The missed field goal by Michigan. And Caleb Downs earlier, after the ball hit an Alabama player on his foot, Caleb Downs, the freshman, having the wherewithal to jump on top of the ball in the special teams department Joe a department that I know you know better than just about anybody in the industry it's been all Alabama and really it's the difference in this ball game with 441 to play you want consistency you want execution and that's what one side is doing and the other side has faltered but we frame this here Quint and the moment has arrived for JJ McCarthy and this Michigan offense you have the ball you're trailing by seven. Now the reality is, Quint, this is not a spot that they've been in at all. This is completely new territory. 4.41 to go. Keep in mind, Michigan only trailed for 39 snaps all season. Undefeated at 13-0, but they put opponents away before this stage in the game. You got to think they practiced their two-minute offense all season long, but it hasn't been uh, something they've needed on game day. So this is a new situation for this Wolverine offense. There's no question, Colston Loveland, the all Big Ten tight end, who's just been a mismatch all season against opposing defenses. They've got to find a way to create some matchups to get him the looks that they want. Roman Wilson, the number one wide receiver, has got very good speed and can really understand zone coverage and find soft spots. I got to think, Loveland, Wilson have to be primary focuses for C for J.J. McCarthy on this crucial drive. We mentioned how rare it is to have Michigan trailing. What was it, 23 and a half minutes of the whole season? And now yes. 11 minutes trailing in this half alone of this Rose Bowl game, the college football playoff semifinal. We said earlier today the way the sun was, the slight breeze, the two winningest programs in the history of the sport, it just felt the way January 1st is supposed to feel in Pasadena. And now 
441 to play with the game on the line. Michigan in the maize and blue home jerseys as they are going right to left with the ball cresting on the 25 yard line. A first and 10 Michigan trailing by seven. The number one seed is trying to overcome some special teams blunders as they have given way to Alabama in this second half. Of course, J.J. McCarthy, he has the best career touchdown to interception ratio among all Michigan quarterbacks in history. This is the 27th start of his career. Can he find a little magic at this point? As they're going to keep it on the ground with Corum, and Corum wiggles his way off the near side, off left tackle to the 30-yard line. That is a gain of about four and a half yards. Yet A.J. Barner, Colston Loveland, his two tight ends there on the near side of the field. They run that into the boundary. We haven't seen them try to attack the perimeter much in the second half. That was a huge piece of what they did successfully in the first half, but a nice run on first down. Second and five for Michigan at their 30 yard line. Quorum in the backfield with McCarthy in the shotgun. They're on the near hash, moving right to left against Alabama. The clock is counting down towards four minutes to play in the game. Michigan trails by seven. They motion Wilson, the receiver. They go opposite to the boundary with Quorum on the handoff. And Quorum is tied up and tackled by Kool Aid McKinstry. And it will be third down and a long one, maybe two yards. Similar formation, similar play. Very good open field tackle by Kool Aid McKinstry, who is known for his outstanding cover skills. But right there, nice job getting. A very talented physical Blake Corm to the ground. Big moment has arrived now for Michigan. Coming up on three and a half minutes to play. It's a third down and two from their own 33 yard line. Corum is the running back. McCarthy out of the shotgun. Near hash. Third down and two as they motion the tight end. McCarthy to pass on third and two. It is batted and incomplete. The ball was batted near the line of scrimmage. And it goes incomplete. Deontay Lawson was able to get a piece of it. That's a magnificent play by the linebacker Lawson. Deontay Lawson does a really good job giving ground, getting right in the throwing lane. He's on Colston Loveland, but that pass was going above him to A.J. Barner, but Lawson with the pass break. Fourth up. down and two. Michigan has to go for it here, according to Harbaugh. He's going for it. Fourth and two. Michigan 33 yard line game on the line trying to convert McCarthy in the shotgun Corum McCarthy back to pass Corum on the backfield complete wide open 45 50 other 45 40 still on his feet 35 flags come in as on fourth down he was able to find Blake Corum wide open on the right side and he danced his way past midfield but we will see if they walk this all the way back the first down should hold because where the block in the back is, it was well past the, the, the first down again. But a, just a bad decision by Roman Wilson. He just blocks the defender in the back right there at the point where everybody was watching. Well, right now they want survival. All Absolutely. they care about is the first down right now. During the run, illegal block in the back. Offense, 10 yard penalty. Still results in a first down. So it still results in a first down to your point, Dusty. Yeah, but just still, Roman Wilson, I mean, is right there at the point of attack. It was an easy call. Multiple flags come flying in. But how did this happen? Blake Corum offset to McCarthy's left. He moves over to the right, and he just sneaks out of the backfield, and nobody accounts for him. A little bit of a pick play, as it looked like it was the freshman Caleb Downs who was matched up on him. And Quorum wide open, an easy pass and an easy call once again as Roman Wilson shoves Terry on Arnold right in the back. But a huge conversion for Michigan, and this drive and game still very much alive. The ball is cresting on the 50 yard line. First down, Michigan under three minutes to play. McCarthy's going to keep himself off right tackle. It's a good run by the quarterback as he bursts ahead for a first down. A great sense of speed, and he hit it hard to J.J. McCarthy to go ahead and move the chains for the Wolverines. Designed quarterback run. They're going to pull the backside left guard, left, left tackle. Trevor Keegan makes a key block on the edge, springing McCarthy. And, oh, boy, Terran Arnold got away with one. Should have nope. easily been a personal foul, but they didn't call it. I mean, McCarthy's all the way in the white, Joe, and he gets thrown to the ground by Terion Arnold. 
Jim Harbaugh is living on the Michigan sideline. Can you believe that? Wow. So it's first and 10 Michigan from the Alabama 34, trailing by seven. 2.20 to play, clock counting down. J.J. McCarthy in the shotgun, play action. Drops back to pass, has a lot of time, and gets it complete. It is Wilson inside the 15, inside the 10. And Michigan has first and goal with a chance to tie it or win it. Here we go. You want drama? You got it. 29-yard reception by Roman Wilson. Wow, what a throw, what a catch. Roman Wilson, man-to-man -man coverage with Malachi Moore. That pass delivered high up top. Roman Wilson climbs a ladder, plucks it from the air, gets to the near sidelines, and sets up first and goal from the five. Wow, what a play, what a drive for the Wolverines. Michigan, first and goal from the Alabama five-yard line. And we're going to get a break in the action here. A timeout with 1.45 to play. Alabama has used a timeout after that Roman Wilson 29-yard reception. And just to reset things for you. There is 1.45 remaining in the game. Alabama roared back in the second half and took a seven-point lead. Michigan took the ball, has gone six plays, 70 yards. The big play came from Roman Wilson moments ago as McCarthy hit him for a 29-yard reception. And they have first and goal at the Alabama five-yard line. They are going to the left. They are in their home jerseys. They are the number one team in the country. Three straight trips to the college football playoff, and they're hoping this one ends differently. Back to action. Out of the shotgun is McCarthy. Gives to Corum. Corum straight ahead, but only gets a yard and a half. And Boyd B and the rest of the middle of that defense collapsing on Corum. So it'll be second and goal from the four-yard line with 134 to play. And Bama looks now, Bama's gonna take a timeout, right? Because if they score, they wanna preserve time. Smart usage of a timeout here by Nick Saban. And Michigan was in big personnel. Three tight ends, Loveland, Barner, Bredesen, all three of those guys in there. Typically what we see from Michigan inside the red area, inside the five, their goal line package, as effective as anybody. Not much running room there, but this is really smart by Nick Saban. Clock management, understanding the situation. And if you do give a timeout, you want to give Jalen Milrow as much time as possible to be able to drive the ball down the field and put up another score. Joe Tessitore, Dusty Dvorak, and Quentin Kesnick with you here at this Rose Bowl game. The granddaddy of them all is playing up to it. The two winningest programs in the history of our great sport are putting on a thriller. It is second and goal. Michigan from the Alabama four-yard line. Quorum is in at the running back. Top 10 in the Heisman back-to-back -back years. McCarthy in the shotgun. Second and goal. McCarthy to pass. Gets it completed. It's a touchdown to Roman Wilson, who leaked out on the near side and just strutted across the goal line. And now, Michigan is an extra point away from tying this game. Love this play call. Love the execution. Play action. Alabama selling out to stop the run. You just sneak Roman Wilson out on the near flats. Easy touch pass for a touchdown. Remember, there was a bobbled and miscommunication and execution on a hold earlier for an extra point. This is Turner to tie the game. Operation is good this time. And it reads Alabama 20, Michigan 20. 134 remaining. Great execution and play call by Sharon Moore. Tight set. It's a, it's a cut split for Roman Wilson off the right side. On the snap, he goes straight across the line of scrimmage into the flats, wide open, play design, execution, 
And how about J.J. McCarthy on that drive? Making plays with his arms. He had a nice chunk run with his legs. And as Quint framed it perfectly, we haven't seen Michigan's offense in this scenario necessarily late in the game, having to go down to score to tie it. And that's exactly what they were able to do. When they had to have it, they executed at their best. A minute 34 remains. Alabama has one timeout, and they have arguably the best clutch big leg kicker in the sport. It'll go for a touchback as Roy Dell Williams secures the ball. 96,371 is the attendance. That's brought to you by Vivid Seats, the official ticketing partner of ESPN. Get great deals on the hottest tickets. Experience it live. There are 96,371 people, Dusty, who will say, I was there. No doubt about it. That's how many came, and that's how many are still here. Not a single person has left this stadium, and Jalen Milrow with a massive opportunity on this drive here in front of him. Game is tied at 20. Minute 34 to play. Alabama first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Jace McClellan flanking Milrow to the right of that far hash. Milrow back to pass on first down. Milrow is going to tuck and run, makes a cut, and is taken down at the 32-yard line. So he goes ahead for seven yards. Chris Jenkins with the tackle. One timeout remains for Alabama. McClellan stays on the field as the running back. Three receivers to the near side, one to the top for Milrow, who goes out of the backfield to McClellan, who has the first down. Did he get out of bounds, or is that clock running? The clock continues to run. A minute eight, a minute nine, they're going to stop it at to move. And as they reset things for a moment here, and the ball is out to the Alabama 37-yard line. They marked him out. Clock they stopped. marked him yeah, out. They, the clock, him they just put more time on the clock. It's at a minute 11 now. McClellan remains in there as he was able to get out of bounds. Milrow back to pass on first down. Drops back his pressure. Gets the ball off. And it's short and incomplete of Kobe Prentin's 15 yards downfield. So with a minute six remaining, it'll be second down. And it's pressure once again from this Michigan front. Jalen Milrow retreating off his back foot. Can't step into this throw. I think if he steps into this throw, he can make it. Pressure gets there. Milrow retreats. And that pass just short of Kobe Prentice. Second down and 10 minutes. Six to go from the 37-yard line. Alabama's own 37-yard line. Game is tied at 20. They're moving left to right, trying to get in field goal position for the big leg Riker. Milrow back to pass. Milrow to the near side, throws it past midfield. There was no receiver anywhere near him. So now it'll be third down and 10 with 61 seconds remaining. It's an errant throw by Jayla Milrow. Not quite sure if the receiver ran the wrong route, but that passed nowhere near an intended target. And interestingly enough, all of a sudden things shift now. Yes. Michigan with three timeouts. If they can get a stop here, completely shifts everything. Safe to say the biggest third down of this ball game. Third down and 10. A minute one remaining. Ball on the Alabama 37-yard line. Milrow out of the shotgun. Alabama going left to right. Can they convert this third and 10? Put themselves in position. Out of the backfield is McClellan, but he is upended by Wallace short of the line to gain. Remember, Michigan has three timeouts. Michigan with three timeouts, and they're going to use one with 52 seconds, and it's going to be a fourth down and a punting situation for Alabama. So all of a sudden, the script flips, and it could be Michigan who gets the last at bat and chance to win it. And Jesse Minter stays aggressive. They bring the pressure, and then they just dump it down outside. As soon as the pressure comes, they get it to Jace McClellan, but it's an outstanding job by Josh Wallace, who is actually giving ground and zone coverage on Jermaine Burton after the pass delivery comes up and makes an excellent open field tackle, taking Jace McClellan off his feet and now likely forcing an Alabama punt. And that will be the case as the six foot six Australian punter James Burnup will come out onto the field to try to flip this field and pin Michigan. He had a 67 yard punt against Mississippi State. We have documented all the special teams miscues for Michigan today. 
And Jake Thaw will be back as the return man and put his heels on the nine yard line. Burnup back to punt. The ball is on the 43 yard line. He has his heels on the 29. 54 seconds to play. Here's the snap. Here's the punt. It is a sky high hanger. Fair catch all the way back. Oh, it's muffed. It is muffed back at the one yard line. And the Alabama coverage team was all over Thaw. He muffed it. He had a retreat. And there were human missiles coming downfield to absolutely destroy him at the one yard line. These Another special teams miscue by Michigan. On point, the special teams woes continue for Michigan. They removed Samaj Morgan, who had been returning all the punts. They put in Jake Thaw, mishandles it, and you said it, a heat-seeking missile flying down the field were Alabama defenders, and that was close to being oh. absolutely disastrous for the Michigan Wolverines. That was so close to going right into the hands of Alabama as Thaw was sent out. So now Michigan's on the one yard line with 44 seconds to go. I think shotgun. McCarthy's in shotgun from his own Enzo. Corum is stacked up after just a one yard game. I'm surprised you're getting a shotgun right there. Why don't you go under center and just quarterback sneak just to give yourself some breathing room. Just a one yard gain as the clock continues to count down. How do you feel about Ooh. overtime, Dusty? How do you feel I about mean, that? You got to go back to what Oklahoma, Georgia, and the 2017 season right here at this Rose Bowl in the playoff. Last time we saw it, I believe that was the first time we had ever seen overtime in the Rose Bowl. You know what? The first four quarters have been so good. Let's have some more. Why Jotes. not? Alabama is going to use a timeout with one second remaining after the special teams blunder by Michigan again gave them no opportunity. I think they may look at this clock. They're going to mark 12 seconds okay. remaining on this clock. Are you with me though on the gun? Like wouldn't you? Yes, wouldn't you just play think? it safe. But just, then again, their offense is their offense, right? Yeah, but they, they run under center. That's part of their offense. Yes, and it should have been there. But the bottom line is, this thing, unless something dramatic happens, is going to be headed to overtime as we go down to Quint Kesnick on the field. Uh, Jim Harbo on the near side walking all the way to the end zone to check the spotting of the ball. He looked out. It's at the two-yard line. So this is enough for a snap and a knee from the quarterback or maybe just fall forward. I agree with Dusty. Surprised to see a potential shotgun here. So there's just enough room to be under center and take a knee, and that is what J.J. McCarthy does. And the final seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one, will send us to overtime soon enough. And a second timeout is actually called Wait a minute. by Michigan. Wonder what the wonder what the thought process. Oh, before the snap, they call the timeout. Okay, so that play never happened. Okay. Well, the play happened. It just didn't happen in reality on this, <laughs> the stat book. Can you believe the drama oh, of this fourth quarter? Gosh. Remember, Michigan had a 13 to 7 lead in this game. Alabama started to find their groove. They got the field goal before halftime and then took the lead on a Jace McClellan run and then a 52 yard field goal by Will Riker made it 20 to 13 but with so much drama and so many big plays Michigan as now they will take a knee Michigan orchestrated an eight play 75 yard drive and McCarthy hit Roman Wilson on a four yard touchdown to make it 20 to 20 and isn't it fitting that these two teams on this grandest stage of college football would go to overtime with it all on the line. Whew. This is wow. These two teams leaving it all on the field here tonight. Just incredible, incredible game. You thought coming in, everything set up for this to be an absolute knockdown, drag out.
and man has it not just lived up to the expectations but exceeded those and some we get extra time what more could we ask for Joe Tessitore well we could ask for an explanation on the overtime rules each team of course will get the ball at the 25 yard line and try to score from there in the second overtime if we get there teams must attempt a two point conversion after a touchdown if we go past two overtimes we're going to alternate two point conversions from the three yard line. Why do I have a feeling we could be headed that way just based <laughs> on how the script is unfolded. It's uh, this is going to be interesting to see exactly how these teams try to attack one another now at the shorter fields. We saw J.J. McCarthy on that final drive have a lot of success throwing the ball also clipped off a chunk run on a designed quarterback run. You know, Jalen Milrow had a couple of runs but remember that that fumble didn't lead to any points for Michigan. But really since that fumble we haven't seen him quite as dynamic with the ball in his hands as a designed runner. Can't wait to see how Tommy Reese and Sharon Moore decide to attack the opposing defenses here in overtime. Captains of course will have a coin toss to determine which side will play offense or defense first and which end of the field will be used. Michigan and Alabama met in overtime once it was the 2000 Orange Bowl Tom Brady led Michigan to a 35 to 34 win. Mr. Brady's probably watching this one tonight, don't you think? Checking out the old alma mater against the tie. Alabama has 265 total yards to Michigan's 326. Alabama's been sacked six times by Michigan's defense. That was the big story of the first half. Jace McClellan has 92 yards rushing for Alabama. Milrow has 47. McClellan with two touchdown runs. And J.J. McCarthy with three touchdown passes. But we had a missed PAT attempt with a snap and hold that was not executed properly. And that is why three touchdowns only comes out to 20 points for Michigan. Here's your coin toss. Alabama, whichever team is on the top will win the toss. The options here, offense, defense, or which end of the field you like to play on. All right? Yep. All right. Alabama, you've won the toss. Defense, defense. Okay, defense, which end of the field? Good. Alabama's won the toss. They were going off it. Our defense, Michigan ball, first down. Of course, Alabama goes on defense because you want to know what you're dealing with. And once again, the overtime rules as we are tied up at 2020, the first overtime. Each team gets the ball to 25 yard line, tries to score. If we get to a second overtime, you have to attempt a two point conversion after a touchdown. Let's go to Quinn. There was a certain hush here at the Rose Bowl, and all of a sudden now the crowd on their feet in anticipation. I think the sides of the stadium Joe that was irrelevant as a neutral venue. There's really no advantage or noise difference between each end zone from a weather standpoint. There's a slight breeze left to right. But other than that this is about as neutral a venue as you get. I mean, here we go. Agree with that assessment as the flag is barely moving. And here we go. First overtime Michigan first offensive possession as they are under center with Blake Corum as the featured back. McCarthy under center on first down from 25 going right to left. Corum with a blocker in front off right tackle. Breaks the tackle, sneaks through inside the 20 for an eight yard run. Tackled by Jalen Key. So a good start to overtime for Blake Corum. It'll be second and two Michigan. Joe, you mentioned blocker out in front. It was the left guard, Trevor Keegan, pulling, getting out in front as he's done so much throughout the course of this game. And good patient running by Blake Corum as he gets outside the right tackle and a nice pickup on first down. Second and two now from the 17 out of the shotgun. 
Corum again. This time he bounces it. He's got the first down and more. Corum inside the five. Corum spins his way across the goal line. Touchdown, Michigan! A 17-yard touchdown run with Blake Corum spinning his way into the end zone. Well, nobody in college football has a nose for the end zone like Blake Corum. 24 touchdowns on the ground. This one off the left side. Good patience, burst, and finds the open space as he runs through a defender into the end zone. Turner for the extra point. Snap, hold, kick, it's good. Michigan is up 27 to 20 in the first overtime. Alabama must match. What a sensational effort from Corum on a touchdown run. It was a excellent job also by 52. Carson Barnhart, who's playing where Zach Zinter was, who got hurt against Ohio State. He pulled around, he got up to the second level, secured the block on Malachi Moore. And just such good patience and fitting off the blocks is Blake Corum will not be denied as he finds the end zone and gives the Wolverines a lead here in overtime. And now the number one defense in the country, Michigan's defense, has a chance to win the Rose Bowl and advance the Wolverines to the national championship. Or will Jalen Milrow end the tie? Get the job done. First down, Alabama. Milrow takes the snap. Milrow, short pass at the line of scrimmage, complete, but for no gain to Kendrick Law as he caught it just about a yard before he went out of bounds, pushed out by Michael Barrett. It'll be second and 10. Michigan up seven. Bama must score to stay alive. Well, it's ideal coverage by Michael Barrett out in the flat, just kind of waiting, waiting for Milrow to distribute the football to Law on its catch tackle on the far sidelines. Jalen Milrow, who had the magic against Auburn on a fourth and 31, now needs to find some here in the first overtime, trailing Michigan by a touchdown. Second down, second and nine. He's going to run it straight ahead. Milrow's free. Milrow inside the 10 before he is tackled. Down around the 8-yard line by Rod Moore. It is first and goal after a Jalen Milrow 16-yard run. Well, they're going to fake the toss to the field, and they're going to come back with the quarterback counter. Pull backside guard Tyler Booker, bring the tight end across, and when Jalen Milrow has a seam and he hits it downhill, he is as dangerous as there is in college football. First and goal, Alabama from the Michigan 9, traveling by 7. Milrow in the shotgun. Flank to the left by Jace McClellan. They're on the far hash. They're going right to left. It's McClellan with the handoff. He goes nowhere. Has to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Junior Polson. And it will be second and goal from the nine-yard line for Bama. Trailing by seven in overtime. Nice job of the interior, that Michigan defense. And it's Colson who sneaks underneath the inside defensive tackle. And he makes a play right to the line of scrimmage. Well done by the junior linebacker. Alabama in those white uniforms and crimson helmets huddling up here. And now they break the huddle for second and goal from the nine-yard line. Trailing by seven in overtime. College football playoff national semifinal. McClellan is tackled for a loss. Mason Graham came darting in, shooting in, slicing in and takes down Jace McClellan for a five-yard loss. Mason Graham lined up right over Tyler Booker. He just hits that inside gap, gets the rip up, and gets Jace McClellan to the ground immediately. Excellent penetration and negative play for Mason Graham. Tenth tackle for loss for Michigan. It is third and goal now, backed up to the 14-yard line. Alabama, desperate times, trailing by seven. Milrow, back to pass, all the way back to the 22. Gets it down inside the five where it's caught by Jermaine Burton and he's wrestled down. It is gonna be fourth and goal. The Rose Bowl, the college football playoff semifinal. The granddaddy of them all is gonna serve up a fourth and goal to determine it 
among the two winningest programs in the history of the sport. Looks Jermaine like Burton, maybe who cramp. just made that catch, is reaching for his left hamstring. He is stiff-legged and cramped up and falls to the ground after that 11-yard reception. Nice route there by Jermaine Burton, working the comeback. Ball's on him right now. And Josh Wallace, kind of a wrestling match as Burton's trying to spin, move, get away from him, and a host of Wolverines show up and get him to the ground. But Burton's still down with the Alabama training staff. It looked like that leg tightened up. He had the stiff leg, as you mentioned, Joe. And I mean, this is a guy who attacks the football and is such a good target for Jalen Milrow. All right, let's get into this fourth and goal a bit. Alabama has the ball at the Michigan three-yard line. They must score. Game is on the line. You've seen what you've seen on the second yep. half of Jalen Milrow and this team. What are you looking for out of the Alabama offense for a play call from offensive coordinator Tommy Reese here, Dusty? I, I want Jalen Milrow to have a run pass option. I want to get him on the perimeter. I want to allow him, if something opens up and he finds an open throw it. If not, what's been the best piece of this Alabama offense? It's been Jalen Milrow's athleticism. It's been his legs. I think you have to have that as part of the option on this play. Would you just go design down. quarterback run with him? Man, I sure would like to give him the option, the opportunity to be able to throw the football. But I, I think it's a, it's a run-pass option based off the run being the quarterback run. And then if it's not there, allow him the opportunity to throw it. Here we go. Let's decide it all in the Rose Bowl. Fourth and goal from the three-yard line. From the far hashes, Alabama. Milrow in the shotgun flanked by Roy Dell Williams. And the officials are going to signal for a timeout, Michigan. You're given one timeout in the overtime, and Michigan is going to use it there as they looked at the personnel group and the formation of Alabama. Two tights in there. They had C.J. Dupree and Robbie Oots, both your tight ends. At five, Roy Dell Williams in the backfield, which interesting, right? Because we've seen Jace McClellan heavily used. We've seen Justice Haynes heavily used. We haven't seen a lot of Roy Dell Williams all game, and now he's inserted in the biggest moment of the season. You can wipe out Jan Miller and Justice Haynes because they probably don't trust him in pass pro. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, but Roy Dell Williams, again, that, that's what that tells me, is that he's in there more than likely to help protect for Jalen Miller. We are back to action. Off the timeout. 110th Rose Bowl game comes down to three yards. Fourth and goal. Alabama gotta have it moment. Michigan leads by seven. Out of the shotgun is Milrow as he then turns back once again and a timeout this time is used by Alabama. So Michigan calls the timeout. Alabama calls the timeout. They've exhausted all the timeouts and they will talk it over. Well now's the time right, to get your best possible play ready for this moment and our, on my board here Roy Dale Williams I have reliable I think that's exactly what you're talking about in a moment when you need someone you can trust they trust Roy Dale Williams who after each time out right, both times they broke the huddle we've seen twice now they've had the same personnel grouping in both times we'll see if it holds true the third time we see Alabama get set up for this fourth down attempt Michigan began the fourth quarter with a lead. Alabama scored and took the lead 30 seconds in. They added a field goal. Michigan had a thrilling touchdown to tie it. And now they have a seven-point lead after Corum's 17-yard run. Fourth and goal. Milrow in the shotgun with Williams in the backfield. Can Bama survive? Milrow running straight ahead. He doesn't get it. He goes nowhere. He's tripped up. And the Michigan Wolverines have done it. They have done it. They have done it. It's all roses finally for Michigan as they have slayed the Crimson Tide in overtime. Milrow stopped on a quarterback run. And maize and gold, maize and blue confetti is flying everywhere here in Pasadena. Twenty-seven to twenty, 
Michigan wins in overtime. You can hail to those victors, Fallon. They are the conquering heroes. The defense did it. Michigan's headed to the national championship game. Let's go down to the field to quit. I'm at the 50 yard line with uh, solo captain Mikey Sainer still. You just had a hug with J.J. McCarthy. What was that like? Man, that was everything. That was all the work we put in. That was the brotherhood. Man, that was just the, the love that this team has for each other in that hug right there. And just the, the way we were able to get over that hump against a team like this, a team that wasn't going to quit, wasn't going to back down. We pulled through, played for each other. And that's, that's all we've known all year. What do you think made the difference when you guys were down late in the fourth quarter? Staying composed, staying level-headed, everybody playing as one, never letting the moment get too big, and just trusting and believing in the game plan. Tell me about the final defensive stand. What do you think made the difference in the extra time? Effort. Effort. And the will to want it more. And we wanted it. You've been part of this team for three years. What does this moment feel like? It feels great. We're going to soak this one in, but we got another big one come Monday. Mikey, congratulations. Go celebrate. Appreciate it. Dusty, what an incredible, absolutely incredible, drama-filled afternoon from these Blue Blood programs in the Rose Bowl. Amazing. The best venue in all of college sports. Two of the most storied programs that we've seen in college football over time because regulation wasn't enough. Wow, wow, wow. And the Michigan Wolverines, they couldn't answer the questions the first time, the second time, but the third time here in the college football playoff, Harbaugh's Wolverines would not be denied. Just an incredible football game that we got a chance to be a part of here this afternoon. Wow, I'm, I'm somewhat speechless. That's, that's as good as it gets in what college football. What a gutsy, thrilling 17-yard winning touchdown run by Blake Corum as well. And then the thing they could always lean on, the defense. Yeah. And, and I got to be honest, like, back to that final play, I don't really get the play call from Tommy Reese. And when they came out of that last time out, they changed personnel groupings because they didn't have Robbie Utz in that last time. So they had gone back-to-back -back times. They were going to go more big personnel. They went with three wide receivers, one back, one tight end. They run Roydell Williams out right at the snap to evacuate and try to get Michigan to vacate the middle. And they were just going to run it right down the throat of this Michigan defense. And that was the wrong decision for Tommy Reese and Alabama because the Michigan defense was there, nowhere for Milrow to go. And it's a victory for the Michigan Wolverines. Wow. Dusty, who is your player of the game? That is brought to you by AT&T. Connecting changes everything. I've got to go J.J. McCarthy. I mean, that, that final drive of regulation to ultimately tie the football game and give them this opportunity, he made a couple of plays. The throw to Roman Wilson. And it was a great job by Roman Wilson climbing the ladder. He had a big chunk run in there. But in a game coming into it that all the conversation, all the focus was around Jalen Milrow, I thought J.J. McCarthy, as a thrower of the football, that element of quarterbacking, he was superior and leading his team to position to tie it up, to get her into overtime, tells me he's my player of the game. Absolute thrilling finish, 27 to 20. Michigan at top and now the momentum they carry to the national championship. Oh my gosh, and you know what's so great about tonight? We got another one in in store right after this down in New Orleans in the Sugar Bowl with Washington and Texas, but you know I love talking with Quint there. We heard uh, Sainer still say they're gonna enjoy this, but the work isn't done like they don't feel that they've won anything yet. They know this is one step to get to where they want to go. The focus will immediately go from celebration to focusing on that next opponent after we find out who that's going to be later on tonight. The confetti has filled the turf here at the Rose Bowl. Back to that turf with Quinn. J.J. McCarthy just uh, got a gigantic hug from Coach Harbaugh. You guys did your patented handshake. What was that about? Um, you know, 
small glimpse of how our relationship is and everything we built over the last three years. You know, I absolutely love that guy. I go to war. I go to hell and back for that guy. And, you know, just to have it come down on this stage in this moment, you know, it hasn't been 26 years since we won it. It's just bittersweet and absolutely amazing. Do you lean on that relationship when you're down seven and need to go the length of the field? Uh, not at all, because we never thought we were out. You know, I feel like we're so focused on the present moment, controlling what we can control as an offense, and it was just going out there and executing football plays at the end of the day. Yeah, what do you think made a difference on that final drive and then in OT? <sighs> Everything we've been through this year. I feel like that's the biggest difference. No matter how many times people count us out, you know, it was just keep pushing, keep pressing, and ultimately just, you know, win the moment, win the play at hand. So is it fair to say there's a toughness, there's a, a certain callous and, and, and fight in you guys that we, we normally wouldn't see? No doubt, no doubt. Um, just talking with Laura, you know, we can't get to the heights we want to get to unless we go through the struggles that we've been through. So I feel like that toughness has been built up over time, and, you know, it's doing us well. JJ for a team, you guys led in most of your games all the year. You only trailed for 39 snaps. It was quite different today. So that made that uh, ultra impressive. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Go celebrate. He's got the rose in his teeth, Joe Tess. He's got the rose in his teeth. Roses will be everywhere for those in maize and blue. And an all-time thriller, that Michigan defense stops Jalen Milrow on fourth and goal in overtime. And our final score, number one Michigan topples number four Alabama and advances to the national championship game 27 to 20 in overtime. For Dusty Dvorak and Quint Kesnick, along with our producer Mike Martino, our spotter Jeff Calhoun, the statistician Joe McNish, engineer Rick Cutler, I'm Joe Tessitore. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. That does it from the Rose Bowl game here in Pasadena. Now, here's Kevin Winter in the studio with the postgame show. Gentlemen, great job in Pasadena. Trevor Maddich is alongside the